Welcome back, Achievers, to your Easy Achievers Game Podcast for the week of September 22nd, 2022. Of course, this is episode, I believe, 138. And of course, I have today, very uh, excitingly, because we have a very important topic to discuss, one, the only, Video Game Utopias, and Milwaukee Jr. <laughs> it's you caught me off guard by using the non-abbreviated version of the website but yes <laughs> hello uh thank you for having me once again uh always happy to have you my friend and of course it's video games utopia because like that's a good name so i'm not hiding that vgu of course oh, good yeah. it reminds me has nothing to do with what we're gonna talk about it reminds me did you ever watch um what was the name of the, the uh jimmy wong i believe made it uh video game high school video game high school yeah it, I, for some reason it reminds me of what the school was called of course it wasn't called vgu but that just for some reason i attribute vgu to the video game high school web series from 10 years ago i think <laughs> so <laughs> at least 10 i was definitely like almost barely at eyes i think i think i was still in high school pretty sure probably 11th grade or something I don't yeah, know, but I, I liked it. It was I don't know why. I've loved that show. It was very good. I remember I remember Jimmy Wong. I think I checked out by the time that came out. So I know <laughs> it exists, but I don't know if I ever actually watch more of it. I was I was still watching like Rocket Jump stuff too. I, I don't I don't even think they're still around anymore, but I watched like their stuff from back then. It was cool. It was always cool. My mm-hmm. favorite is when um they wrote a skit about two fanfic writers writing about a fanfic. The fanfic is happening, but it also cuts back to the two. Ashley Birch is actually in it, and she directed it. And it cuts wow. back to those two arguing over the fanfic. And it's like this story of like two friends like fighting, and then they make up at the end, and then they write a fanfic together. And of course, it's horny, so like it, it's like has Doctor Who making out with, I think like, uh, Harry Potter, and like uh, it's so fun. it's so good. It's, uh, it's like, people go watch it. It was really good. <laughs> i'm probably explaining it terribly but it's it was fun um achievers uh this is not a rocket jump fan cast now this is the of course easy gaming podcast we come to you every single friday on the service that you like to watch or listen to be it a podcast or youtube uh we already covered this or i guess i already covered this in an independent video but it's a glaring thing and we're gonna do something unprecedented we're actually going to start the show with a new story because I just feel like it's the elephant in the room. We we might as well cover it first. Then I will actually start the show formally after this. Of of course, if you um, you know what, Emmett, let's just get into it. <laughs> well, unless you've been living under a rock or just blissfully not online, then you have heard some of the biggest gaming news this history I've seen in a long time. Grand Theft Auto Six, the upcoming highly anticipated sequel in the long running franchise from Rockstar, has had a massive leak, unlike we have seen in the industry. The leak contained a staggering amount of information as of now over 90 videos have been a part of this leak showcasing anything from open world environments to enemy AI to dev environments to NPCs having conversations so much more. Now let's go over the how, why's, where's and the who. Let's go over with where and who as this will lead us to the rest. These leaks originally posted to GTA forums by username Teapot Uber Hacker. <laughs> stupid as they yeah was also yeah. behind the recent uber hack that we will get into in a second but it seems that this was the work of possibly a single person as the prime suspect is currently a 16 year old british teenager and is a leader of a hacker group called lapsus which online hacker forums have pointed out him to be the leading man in this investigation now going back to how for a second it seems that the hacker used slack the popular work app similar to discord that many people in the world use to communicate to obtain all this, assuming he got it from a work at home or remote worker, most likely after receiving a login through a, uh, various methods they could have used. The save me- uh, method is what was used against Uber in their recent hack. The why is obvious as the hacker posted that they wanted to negotiate a deal to not release the source code, meaning they wanted some sort of compensation to not release it. But it seems someone did send $100,000 of Bitcoin to a similar address, but seemingly was not him, as he said he never got any money. So someone probably also got scammed on top of all of this. We do also have a statement from Rockstar, um, uh, as they've remained somewhat quiet until uh, about, I want to say, close to 12 hours before we all knew. Message from Rockstar, uh, and this is from their via, uh, via their Twitter account, I'm sure, also on their website. 
We recently suffered a network intrusion in which an unauthorized third party illegally accessed and downloaded confidential information from our systems, including early development footage for the next Grand Theft Auto. At this time, we do not anticipate any disruption to our live game services, nor any long-term effect on development of our ongoing projects. We are extremely disappointed to have any details of our next game shared with you all in this way. Our work on the next Grand Theft Auto game will continue as planned, and we will remain as committed as ever to delivering an experience to you, our players that truly exceeds your expectations. We will update everyone again soon, and, of course, we'll probably introduce, we're sorry, we'll properly introduce you to this next game when it is ready. We want to thank everyone for their ongoing support through this situation via the Rockstar Games team. Important in closing, both Uber and Rockstar are working with the FBI to try and find out who's behind this. And that is it. Oh now, I want to open with, what did you see? What of the forbidden fruit have you picked from the tree? And tell us, did you see much? Did you, did you poke around? What did you do when you first read this news? I saw this thing as it was breaking at like 2 a.m. before everyone woke up to it. I did too. So... I was someone had already gotten on Reddit. There was already a post. There was already a compilation of yep. here's just a direct link to all 90 videos. Um, I'm going to keep it real. I'm not the biggest Grand Theft Auto fan in general, so I didn't quite indulge as much as I'm sure other people would. I didn't watch all 90, but I probably watched a good 18, 20. Uh, saw a couple things. I saw a lot of the longer clips. Um, and... Yeah, that that's mainly what I saw. I saw a lot of like I saw that one bank rob or not bank robbery, uh diner robbery. The diner robbery. I saw that. Yeah, it seems like that's the most common one that everyone saw. Yeah, that's the one that I actually saw that on Twitter before I actually found the Reddit thread cuz it was trending on Twitter and I'm like, "What do you mean GTA 6? Oh my god." <laughs> I was blown away when I first saw this. I saw it similar to you, but I was so tired. I was like, "I have to look at this in the morning." And I actually went to sleep. Um, after like yeah. looking through a few things, I was like, I can't believe this is happening. At first, I was like, this can't be fake. Maybe it is. That was prior to me learning that there were... At that point, I only thought there were about 10 to 20. Later on that morning, 60 came out. And then later on that day, we found out over 90 videos are out there. Uh, free for the internet to use. Rockstar has begun like uh, implementing takedowns of these nature. So we're going to slowly see, hopefully... If you're a YouTuber, you didn't include these things in your video. I don't know why you would do that. But if you did, start scrubbing now if you're not already claimed. Um, but I, I saw, uh, I would say probably 8 to 10 maybe. Uh, I watched uh, them testing cop AI. I saw them uh, doing some dev environment stuff. I saw a picture of the protagonist at a street, by the way. Um, they gave the protagonist a huge ass, and I'm a big fan of that. Yeah. Big fan of this. She Look, is so everyone. attractive to me for some reason. Uh, <laughs> I, like, oh the moment God. that still came out, I was like, wow, the dump truck they gave this lady is impressive. It was crazy how everyone on Twitter was like talking about that, and I'm just like, I get it, but at the same time, like, <laughs> as like the on the bulleted list of things to talk about in this thing. Yeah, I, I of that course, that like, is the first thing I have to bring up because it was so dist it's distracting almost. Oh, yeah, it, it is. It is. I understand. Like, I couldn't help but look. I'm like, what the fuck? I've never. Especially we've been playing as men in these games for 20 years. The yeah. second we get a woman, it's like, oh, proportionally. <laughs> like, there's no there's no mistaking it. Yeah. I get it. I, get I, had, it. I had to bring it up so we can now move on from it. Um, <laughs> exactly. uh, I also saw like the robberies I, I saw the NPC conversations which was the most Grand Theft Auto thing I saw out of all of this by the way is those two NPCs talking um, oh yeah yeah um, apparently the build is pretty old it's actually a, possibly from even 2019 as far as back from them so we may be looking at a 3 year old build from this game well, and if that's true that's pretty fucking nuts yeah, like I'm pretty sure I'm not exactly sure the context in which these clips were acquired, but how I'm imagining all these things got acquired is since he got it through Slack, um, because that's how the Uber hack happened. They went through Slack and got everything. My guess is you go to Slack, you have access to everyone's messages. People are sending videos through Slack. That's why it's a bunch of short videos rather than one hour long thing. Yeah. So I'm guessing he downloaded all those. I'm guessing he got the source code by looking at people's passwords they're sending through Slack and then <clears throat> logging onto their site or whatever and getting that information that way. 
um i'm sure that's how this hacker accomplished all that stuff it's what i can just put together like the steps of how to get yeah all stuff. yeah once once is, he got multiple logins it, it was it was over exactly and so i'm thinking like all right you're getting these 90 videos i because what i heard is that some the videos range from 2019 until mm. you know as recent as a month or two ago so and of course there's i'm not in game development nor am i working on this project entirely or at all so i don't know which yeah. clip is which, we kind of have to guess exactly and <laughs> that i'm not gonna that's not gonna be fun to guess but um it seems like yeah they pulled everything that might have been shared there throughout the course of the development of this game so yeah that's it's really crazy to see a 16 year old did this and thought they could negotiate like this kid <laughs> He he's got some 20. balls i'll tell you that yeah. <laughs> i don't know what he thought was gonna happen but uh he definitely is known if the oh yeah uh, allegations are true on who it is um yeah. God, there's so many different ways we can go with this i'll start with uh the leaks were pretty crazy speaking quickly about like how old this was or not i'll be very curious to uh it, first off it looks very impressive regardless of how old it is it already looks pretty impressive for a game that's probably not coming out for another two to three, maybe even four years. We really don't know. Yeah. Um, it looks pretty yeah. impressive, and it's pretty good for, I think, the stage of film. I think that just speaks to, like, just the quality yeah. and how much money Rockstar has, the amount of people they probably have worked on this project. Um, I will say, though, uh, as a side note to the leaks, I was a little sh not shocked maybe i maybe not even surprised but the thing was when i heard because we all knew the rumor you know you're playing as a latina woman yep as one of the characters one of, yeah one. I, it's in vice city um both of those things have been confirmed to this leak but what i thought when i heard vice city i thought oh we're going back to the 70s mm. and this is okay very much so no. not the yeah. 70s Modern, i heard sure. a, I, I remember hearing a schoolboy q song in one of the leaks that came out in like 2016 oh yeah so, like wow. So like, nah, that it, we're definitely in modern day. So I was surprised by that. And I was also surprised by how, if you think back to Grand Theft Auto's of the past, going from San Andreas to GTA 4, going from GTA 4 to GTA 5, those, each of those games looked completely different from one another with each, I guess, numbered entry, numbered iteration, if you want to call it that. San Andreas is part of the GTA 3 trilogy. So I'm kind of just lumping it all into one. This is the first Grand Theft Auto where it just looks like another Grand Theft Auto. Mm. It looks like an iteration of five rather than an evolution of Grand Theft Auto as a whole, which is, huh. once again, judging this from a leak. Yes, of course. We, we're, we're judging this from maybe 30 minutes of video of which I've seen 15. <laughs> yeah. So, like, this this will change entirely. But to me, it was a little bit surprising to just see how Oh, this looks like art style wise. It looks very similar to GTA five. Um, just gameplay wise, very similar to GTA five. It looks like they're not changing too much there. And they're just like, all right, here's a new, not a new slap of paint. Cause that's very reductive, but like new city, new characters, all that stuff. Similar tone as well. Cause some yeah. of these clips had like dialogue and it seems like a lot of the types of humor they were going with is the same. So I don't know. That has me. I don't want to say nervous. Uh, you know what? I will say a little nervous just because GTA 5, I did not like its tone or its story. <laughs> like, it was very, like, it's one of the greatest games of all time for a lot of people. I'm not going to take that away from anybody. But for me, it was a, it was purposefully a story about bad men doing bad things and being miserable. And I get the point. I just don't like that. <laughs> and so... It, I just, after a while, I beat the whole game, but after a while, by the end of it, I was like, that wasn't worth it. <laughs> that was not worth, this whole journey was not fun enough to justify all of the horrible shit that these guys either do or are complicit in, all that stuff. So when I see that they got the, sim the same tone or at least a similar looking tone in GTA 6, I'm like, because I was really hopeful, oh, we're playing as a female protagonist, so we won't have a whole story about toxic masculinity. But the same tones here, so I don't know what they're doing with her. <laughs> I'm very nervous to see. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm very curious where we're going with it. And if the further rumors are true, our second character is the brother. So maybe we'll be yeah. and they're twins, and she has a brother. We'll also be playing as him. Uh, uh, apparently, it's going to be very like Bonnie and Clyde. Of course, not a okay. 
course, n- not, not as romantic, romantic but apparently... Well, it is Florida. It is for I mean, <laughs> hey, Florida... And, I mean, literally anything is legal. Like, you could literally... You could do anything there, so... Yeah, I wouldn't I shock me. Breakers. Yeah, we all saw it. We all know. We've been there. We saw the Gators. It's... I mean, that's just a reality. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or the Gator? <laughs> Multiple. Um... <laughs> So you stick with a couple of things you pointed out there. Grand Theft Auto Five, yeah, it, I won't, I won't, I won't pretend like I don't agree. the The picture that I saw of the NPCs talking, if you would have showed me that was Grand Theft Auto Five, I would have believed you again. And you said this still early. These are all leaks. Of course, it doesn't seem uh uh in context because we don't have context. It's just clips of things being shown to us. So of course, it's not gonna uh blend in well. But I think that is something clear to point out. Again, I do think the game still looks pretty good for, for another four years it needs. Um, I To quickly bring it up, only because it was very confusing to me, I saw, I saw two kind of uh, uh, opinions that kind of kept resonating throughout the games industry that just kind of bothered me. One, we kept talking about how this how early the game looks. I think that's obvious, and if people don't know this is an early look at a game then they either are doing a bad faith argument, and I just don't think we should give them any attention, faint, frankly. And two, yeah. they just don't understand the industry. And if we're not going to try and educate them, we got to ignore them. I, I don't, I don't, I don't see the the amount of people that I kept hearing that like this is early, this is early game stuff. Blah blah. blah. I was like, we everyone that no offense matters knows that. So like, why are we talking about this? for so long and then mm-hmm. two there seems to have been two people that were lumped into this conversation either leaks are bad and we should never talk about them or leaks are great and like we should leak everything and i feel like that was very uh, annoying on both sides of the argument one yeah. we should talk about every leak because it's a news that's what we should talk about um I saw someone tweet, I'm not going to say who it was, I saw someone tweet, this ruins the PR of the game. I promise I could give two shits less about the PR of this multi-billion dollar game, so I do not care about that. Conversely, I also disagree with like how amazing these leaks are, and we should be like so happy that this dude leaked it because they should have showed us some of the game and things of this name. I'm like... No, no. The, the, yeah. There's a medium yeah, that I think we should all go to that is makes this not something we should encourage, but we should cover it if it happens. And also, we should not care about the PR for Rockstar. I think they're going to be okay. I think everyone's okay there. I feel like everyone making over six figures don't really care that a little bit of the game leaked. I think at the end of the day, everyone's fine. I do feel bad, of course, for the devs. Or everyone working there, it is kind of like, eh. But it's a little exciting that this is how big of a deal Grand Theft Auto Six is. Is you got on Forbes, you got on CNBC, CNN, you, you got on every giant news factor because this huge and notable thing happened. So take a little bit of pride in that as well, as that's how big of a game you're working on. I'll say for for the people who are like, oh man, we should leak everything. I don't think I think a lot of those people are the folks who are like waiting for gta 6 to the point where they don't play anything else yeah there are people out there who are like where the fuck is the next gta we've we've bought three versions of gta 5 like we're kind of sick of it at this point and their 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 waiting has turned into rage and so when this leak happened it's like serves them right because they it's taking them too long to make this game i I did see a lot of people say that yeah i agree yeah but a lot of those folks are like number one people who are not following the industry i guarantee you those people don't know the difference between an IGN and a GameSpot. Yeah. Like they do, they are not following it like that. Those are all people on Twitter talking out of spite, talking out of ignorance as well. So, you know, I, I'm trying not to give them the time of day anyway. And then you got the people. <clears throat> I did see within the community of like, you know, game developers, people who've worked on games, um, people being really upset about the leak and being like, hey, if you're talking about it, if you're engaging with it, if you're engaging with it, you're complicit in that leak culture. I saw that too. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck yeah. are we doing, people? And what I, are we doing? I, here's the thing. I, I want to say that I do. I see the point they're trying to make. But ultimately, when it comes down to it, if you're 
<clears throat> if your game gets leaked like this as a developer, think of it as like if you're an artist, uh, if you're a painter, and you are known for painting Mona Lisa's, you're known for painting Van Gogh's, all, or Van Gogh's the music, right? Anyway, you're known for painting like the most beautiful pictures ever. And someone leaks a picture of one of your paintings half done, that hurts your pride a little bit. That hurts the artistic ego, whatever you want to call it. It's going to hurt. And I understand there's a lot of folks at Rockstar and a lot of people who suffered from previous leaks that have had that pain thrust upon them. That I am empathetic towards. Like you said, I, yeah. the developers having their work put out before they're able to make it presentable, that hurts. But a lot of these leaks, a, a lot of people thirst over these leaks and a lot of people have this reaction because i've also seen a lot of people who are once again don't follow the industry who are like oh this looks bad this looks like fucking it's like mafia wars <laughs> like <laughs> uh, yeah i i were I, I was just flabbergasted i was like i don't know what to tell yeah. you i really don't and a lot of those people only feel that way because a lot how games are made is such a mystery to people like even me as someone who's been following you know the industry i watch my no clip documentaries all that good shit <laughs> I still couldn't tell you exactly how most games are made just because I just don't know. That requires a lot of, you know, knowing about coding and knowing about all these different programs and languages and whatnot. So, like, it is still such a mystery that for people who just play them and have no other experience with games, it feels like magic. Yeah. So you're like, all right, well, why can't you make the magic work faster? It's not like movies where you understand there's a set where you under there have been so many movies made about making movies that the general public knows how a movie is made. Generally. Yeah. Yeah. We still have, we still don't have much media about people making games. You have mystic quest, I guess, but I don't know how much that is about game development. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that and what grandma's boy, he was a game. developer. <laughs> That's so, true. He was like in the mainstream consciousness, people still think these games just come out magically. And it's all done, and there's no blood, sweat, and tears, or education, or know-how involved. So when a leak comes out like this, you're seeing the game, and you expect it to look like the final product as soon as you see it. But you're seeing it early on accident, and it just looks this way. So yeah, that's that's my problem with it. Where I understand people being hurt by the leak getting out, and I also agree that's bad. Yeah. But at the same time, People are only thirsting for these leaks because this, the industry is too secretive as well. Yeah. We, I, I don't know if we've talked about that on the podcast, but the industry does. We're very of secretive. Stuff, just, yeah. And that's more frustrating than not. Um, and, you know, y if people are going to look at these leaks and consume them, they have that thirst because they want to know. And if you're going to sit there and be like, oh, how dare you consume this stuff? It's like. They want to know if you don't want to tell us, <laughs> we're going to find out however we can. Yeah, it's, so, it's just people yeah. that want to know about the game. I think we're being a bit hyperbolic on like how mm -hmm. bad this was. Um, it, yeah, it's through I some people's uh, eyes. Hurt. I get I, yeah, I get it, I, too. I, I sympathize. I, I, I do. But at the end of the day, you know, it's not like someone was murdered. So it's like, you know, yeah, yeah, it, it, these are just video games. We're just talking about this. OK, it's going to be all right. We can talk about mm -hmm. this. Um, exactly. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of my thoughts on this. I, I do want to quickly say, don't underestimate how, I think I agree with you, don't underestimate how little people know about game development. I was talking yeah. with a, a couple people in, um, uh, just over my years. I remember one time I did a, a, a presentation on video game development. Um, I don't remember uh, why I was able to do this, but I was able to do this in like an English class. I think it was either late high, yeah. high school, early college. And I remember talking about... Uh, was it Breath of the... No, it was Skyward Sword and its development time, I believe. And if, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly, it took almost nine years to b develop that game from like start to finish because of certain aspects of the game. That's off the top of my head. I, I don't remember if that's true, but I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. And, then the, the and then just the awe in everyone's face when they were like, nine years? Like, it just... People just don't know. They just don't... They, we're not... Mm -hmm. We haven't been around that long. We've only been kind of in the the mind of the everyday person 20 years that, that might be pushing yeah. it like I as being a first the, time like the world the, about yeah the war like the the vast majority of people like understand what games are and things of that nature so like i don't think we can really underestimate that i don't think a lot of people know how it works i don't very much know that much either 
I know the bare bones. I know a couple things. I don't know a lot. It is mostly me guessing. I'll say I, I'm right there with you, but I think the fact that we know that we don't know yeah. is important. It is. A lot of people are just like, fuck you. I know enough to be mad. And it's like, nah, just have patience and just have understanding for the people who know more than the one of the funniest things that did come out of this is someone did tweet visuals are one of the first things done in a video game and which just makes oh you laugh God. it just makes you laugh that would be the first thing i bring up because there's just way too much to bring up throughout the people just not knowing what they're talking about but that was one of the funniest things i ever saw I was like wow you fucking really don't know what you're talking about if you really if you genuine if you're not you know, of course not bad faith or trolling or something if you generally believe that you really just don't know what's going on I'll also say that that tweet, I think, sparked the small little kind of trend of a yeah. lot of developers doing early screenshots. And that was very Which cool. Which like should be stuff. more common to kind of help people. You know, that would be very cool. I, I remember and, uh, God of yeah. War. Uh, was it? A, it might have been dev on God of War. They showcased one of the final boss fights in the game. And it was so early. No one had barely people had faces. They kind of had outlines of their body and outlines mm -hmm. of the environment. Like that shit's cool to me. So I wish we saw more of that stuff. Yeah, I, I'll say there are, I mean, if people are curious, there are some resources out there, you know, Game Maker's Toolkit, great YouTube channel, yeah. just talked about no clip, great YouTube channel, Dice, they put up a lot of their, or GDC, uh, they put up a lot of their talks online, so you can watch a lot of that stuff. There are some resources out there, but a lot of those resources are only going to be consumed by people who are watching a show like this. Yes. They're already into podcasts. Yes, they're already into so this, they, so it is hard for yeah. something that got that public. We're gonna get a lot of people who just don't know what they're talking about, and it's just that's just that's just gonna, that's just that's what's gonna happen. Yeah. Um. Hey, one day, one day we'll get there. What? One day. Um. I think we covered basically pretty much everything I wanted to cover in this conversation. Uh. The leaks are huge. I'm sure you can still go find them if you want to go look at them. Um. Not. Yeah, what's absolutely. surprisingly, it doesn't seem like story was leaked. It just seems like core development things were leaked. I don't think I've seen anything close to narratively something like so it seems like whoever he had access to was probably a straight up developer like uh, nothing would do with like the story design or uh, gameplay director or anything like that so you're pretty safe in terms of like spoilers it seems yeah, at this point you spoiled the gta game for me i'd be like all right whatever <laughs> yeah that too it's not like this is a story centric franchise not by any means too, definitely that. is not that my god I, that, that i mean at the end of the day just to quickly kind of close out this conversation since you brought up last of us 2 i i can think of uh, three other instances of of how big of a deal this is this last of us part 2 leak and now in hindsight of course the geoforce now leak or nvidia leak yeah uh, it's probably yeah. the three biggest things i think that i've ever had in terms of unintentional leaking of things and then of course there's a handful of other things but i think that's the biggest thing to come out I would add number four, the Half-Life 2 leak that delayed that game. The source code, of, right? Um, is yeah, that what? Yeah, code. yeah. Yeah, someone went to jail over that. So. <laughs> yeah, that is true. And and I didn't cover this in the uh, thing because it looks like nothing will happen of it. But the, he said he had the source code. Nothing has happened. Be so assumably he still has it. Maybe he got scared off because he deleted all of his stuff. So may wow. maybe wow. he got intimidated by someone or something, but he didn't leak it. And if, if he really does have it and he did leak it, that oof, that would have been really, really bad for the game. That that yeah. that would have require a r massive recoding uh, throughout the game. Um, and also, that's I another thing people <laughs> it's that's also another thing people don't quite understand. People are saying it was a not a big deal. The source code leak. I was like. The source code is the game. So if you have the source code, you know how the game works. So now you can manipulate the shit out of the online infrastructure of a game that will be online. So I, I was that's another thing that I, that I saw people that actually were knowledgeable about the industry saying like, oh, the source code isn't that big a deal. I'm like, are you fucking nuts? That is a huge deal if they leak the source code of the game. So that was also an interesting thing I saw. But again, I can't blame people for not knowing these very obscure facts. <laughs> True that. We're actually going to rewind now and pretend like we're going to start the show. Of course, we start the show with the not so rapid rapid fire. The Call of Duty beta is going on right now for people who pre-ordered the game. So as of you're listening, you can go check it out. If you pre-ordered the game, it should open to you by the time Saturday hits. I believe it's Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern. 
I remember correctly. Hopefully, I'm 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 nailing that. Uh, so get your taste on the game. Let us know what you thought. I'm gonna be playing it over the weekend. Uh, I could be playing it right now, but of course I'm doing this fucking show for you people. Uh, what else? <laughs> you, I'm just kidding. Are you are you gonna be t- uh, tasting the beta at all? Um, I might a little bit. I, I played a little bit of it last week because I got into the PS4 exclusive one. Shout out to Xfinity for the code. Um, Xfinity gave but, uh gave uh Alex a code, which lets me have the code. Yep, there you go. Bingo, bingo. Um, yeah, I played a little bit of it. It's it feels like Call of Duty. Yeah. It, and I mean that in a way where, you know, I play every Call of Duty. I'm going to play this one. I'm probably going to buy it as soon as it comes out. But it's I, I haven't seen enough of it's like it feels very different. It feels like there are a lot of pretty substantial changes. But playing that compared to the thing that I'm going to talk about that I've been playing with the last week or so. That is more exciting than Call of Duty. So yeah, I will definitely I try it out just to see what's up. Previews of Mario and Rabbits are out. Get excited if you want to go to your favorite YouTuber or IGN or something and see what they thought about the game. Of course, it's the newest one due out. Um, I'm blanking on the, the release date. I want to say I want to say October 28th. That sounds but right. It's October sometime. That sounds right. Yeah. I have a screenshot of the trailer in my head for some reason. Uh, you had uh, you told me in the show you left me on the edge of my seat. You have another preview you want to tell the achievers. What was it? I don't know how many people are actually covering this, but I just saw Skill Up posted a preview of Scorn, mm. Mm. the horror game from. Oh, Xbox. really? Well, the horror game that's coming out on Xbox Game Pass. Yeah. As it releases. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if he's the only one who got a preview build because literally he's the only one I've seen share anything about this. But um, he has like a 13 minute video up. I'm about to watch it as soon as I'm done here. Uh, but yeah, I'm very excited for score. And so I just want to I just want to see what that game is. And from halfway through the video that I've watched so far, it seems like it's going to be a wild one. So I'm excited for it. It does look like they also featured eight minutes of gameplay as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, you can all look at that. that. Wow. That. Wow, that thumbnail is disgusting. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. The whole Christ. game's gross. The whole game. Wow. Literally, the video starts with him having to talk for 30 seconds so the content warning doesn't trigger. And then oh, all good the- point. Good point. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, I was about to say, like, how do you even get this past? I don't know. <laughs> That's this, the way. This one took me by surprise. <laughs> video Game Donkey has started a publishing company called Big Mode. If you're interested in learning more, he has a website. He also has a video detailing on why he's opening this up. Um, saw a lot of negativity around this. I was very surprised. I thought people like video game donkey. I mean, I wish him well. Um, it's a, he seems like he wants to start publishing indie games unclear on how far he's like willing to do this. I don't know if he's, uh, offering funds or, or some sort of loans, or if he's just like using his platform to boost things I, unclear, but it's still early. He, he just debuted this. So, um, I do, do you care about video game donkey or big mode? Um, I'm aware of Video Dang Donkey. I've watched a couple of his videos. I think he's kind of funny. I also think he comes off as a bit of an asshole in some of his videos. I'm pretty sure that's intentional. I don't know. <laughs> Whether it's intentional or not, we have being funny or being an asshole to be funny is not quite in vogue in 2022. Interesting. <laughs> especially, especially for a lot of people who the game you're shitting on is the one that they didn't see their family for two years to make mm. so it can hit different so i'm not surprised that in the video game industry a lot of people may not love video game donkey but there Good are a point. lot of people who I'll, I'll the take that i share when it comes to this thing video game donkey i don't really have a problem with him even though he does come off as a bit like all right you're just shitting on a thing and i don't want to watch a video about you shitting on a thing for 12 minutes but i i hope this works i hope you know i hope some really cool indie games come out of this i hope some folks who weren't going to get a shot get a shot because of this um but at the same time I, I i heard in the announcement video he said something along the lines of i played every type of game so i know what a good game is and a bad game that is he a does very... say, he does say that that is a true yeah. quote i watched the video as well <laughs> so he's uh, emmett is not being unfair he does say, say that verbatim so i also thought that was quite of an interesting to say again i can't tell if he's being a a character or not it, that was a very strange thing to open your video with i i play i, I know i have like good taste and i know like how to find a good indie game and i was like interesting way of putting everything you just said <laughs> oh it looks like you're muted possibly sorry there you that. go no you're good yeah, my headset went out and then you were talking through the speaker so i had to like turn it on and got you got you anyway um yeah uh him saying that really 
turned me off a little bit. I was mm. like, oh, what the, what the hell are we doing here with this? Um, but, you know, ultimately, I, I hope it's good. I just hope that, you know, video game donkey kinds of come off as a little a little full of himself sometimes and hopefully that doesn't get in the way of like some of these indie games getting a shot so that's all i gotta say i concur <laughs> little joke for you <laughs> no one else gets ah, that no one else gets that <laughs> that is literally you. just for me and Evan. october 6th comes the teaser for the mario movie at san diego comic-con ceo of microsoft said he is confident the deal will go through of course speaking about the activision uh blizzard i'm not covering this as a full news story because i'm tired of talking about this of course the activision stock price still does not reflect this would going through because it is still down nearly 20 percent of microsoft's price offer if the market was confident it would of course match the offer uh so you would be guaranteed money um he also did say an interesting thing i will quickly go over that he said um uh they want to be competitive of the market so let us compete in reference to Sony's also buying uh uh buying of uh things like Bungie and, and things of this nature. I did I, I I when I read that I was like that's like me comparing me buying a house and like someone like Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk buying a house. Not quite the same thing. Uh those are two very different types of purchases. I understand what you're meaning here. I understand you have to talk that way for stock prices and things of that nature. But it was very interesting that I was like, PR, let you say that. <laughs> it's very I would weird. argue I would argue that Xbox trying to get on the level of Sony's entire collective of exclusives, like in general, it, including Destiny and all that shit, like God of War, Uncharted, you know, Last of Us, all this shit. That's a powerhouse. So buying Activision would make them more on par. Actually, buying Activision would just blow them would blow the them out of the water. Yeah. <laughs> but, but at the same time, Xbox is not going to make that shit exclusive instantly. You know, they're going to wait a couple years, or if they're going to give a couple years where it's like, oh, it's on both, but it's on Game Pass over here. Yeah. So you know, th that's a de facto exclusive. Bill point. is trying his hardest to make it as clear as possible. It is not going exclusive. I love that they are so clear that they're like they, it literally doesn't make financial sense for us to go exclusive. Um, I thought people were crazy if you really did think Call of Duty was going exclusive. You just that's just m so much money you you would have to give up. I don't think it would happen. But I, I bet in a couple years it's gonna be hey we're gonna put this on all platforms where Game Pass exists. They're gonna look at Sony and be like hey you want Game Pass? So <laughs> yeah, exactly. I do think, I think that is I the end goal is getting Game Pass on PlayStation. I don't care what anyone says. I think if I was inside of Phil's head and I went to end goal door and opened it, it would be Game end Pass goal. on PlayStation. And that I think that is his end win. He doesn't care uh, anywhere else. We'll have to see. Bingo. That guy talks out of both sides of his mouth. I love him, but he does. <laughs> Uh, this is a very quick one. During an interview, Sarah Bond said uh, we can expect original Japanese title from Xbox in the coming years, similar to when we had Blue, Blue Dragon and Lost Odyssey. Please, for the love of God, don't be lying to me, Sarah Bond. I want a return of Blue Dragon and Lost Odyssey era of Xbox. All right, take chances. Get fucking weird. All right, Lost Odyssey, very good game. Underrated. Blue Dragon, very good game. Underrated. I will say, don't expect sequels to those. No, but maybe don't do that. Like. <laughs> Maybe expect the vibe of those to yeah. come back, but maybe don't because I don't want people to be like, ah, oh, Blue Dragon's back. And it's like, all right, let's let's calm down. I didn't say that. All right, everyone oh, calm yeah, down. You didn't say that. Everyone but calm down at home. That. All right. That's what they're gonna do first. We're definitely not gonna get Lost Odyssey 2, although I would openly sob as I will be later in the show when we talk about a, a franchise coming back. Okay. You can now pre-order the Series 2 core controller in the complete component pack. Very wise of Xbox to jump on this, of course, in front of the DualSense Edge coming out. Very wise. You can see that they're very trying to very competitively price their things in front of that. Oh, yeah. The A mode of Iron Man game uh, was true, as EA confirmed in a press release. They have an Iron Man game in the works. Olivia Oliver Prolix is team lead who worked on Guardians of the Galaxy. Assumably, once Dead Space is fully complete, the rest of the team will focus on the project. Later in the press release, they allude to other games of the modern universe coming from EA. If rumors are true, the other one is going to be a Black Panther game. He did say several, meaning it could be more than one, so we're probably getting Iron Man, Black Panther, someone in somewhere else is probably making something. Very Squirrel exciting. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> Squirrel Girl. Uh, another interesting thing, we're getting a Black Panther game. If it's true, we're also getting a Black Panther game inside of Amy Hennings game, which would be very interesting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 
Uh, I'll say for this one, uh, I mean, I'm interested in this game. I mean, they're probably just going to talk to Bioware and be like, hey, can we borrow some of this Anthem tech? And boom, bam, boom, you got a great Iron Man. I, th- I think uh, they definitely will see what the coding looks like in Anthem and probably see if they can finagle some sort of perfect synergy between there that and whatever tech they have left over from squadrons and see like w- it, if they can like balance ah. a perfect plight uh pilot esque game mm-hmm. yeah so i'm sure we're gonna be seeing that soon uh when you talk about black panther that is one thing i'm starting to get a little nervous about we're getting a lot of not direct crossover with these marvel games but because marvel is so in the games industry now like it's not just oh a movie's coming out we gotta have a game made it's here's our ip make a game it, we're gonna have multiple black panther games out within you know a few years of each other probably um we're, we're gonna have these characters popping up more and more in our face and we're already reaching a point where i might be stagnating with the mcu a bit i don't want that to happen in video games <laughs> so i mean I, the iron man game sounds dope black panther game sounds even doper to me um and amy henning doing anything is exciting to me but yeah, these IP and these characters just don't want to get I don't want to be oversaturated with them. And I feel like that has a chance of happening now more than it did back when they were all movie tie ins. I didn't have to care about. <laughs> so it's it's funny you say this. Last week we had ISO Christian on. He, he he almost said exactly what you said verbatim as we are nearing <laughs> a saturation point with the Marvel Universe because the nature of how games are made. If you think we're saturated now, in three to four years, we're about to get all of this. Imagine what it's going to look like then. Just use your imagination. If, if you think it's bad now, fucking wait. Just wait. Just wait. You'll be sick of it, I'm sure, by three or four years. And I'm saying that as a guy who grew up with comic books, and this is like, this was my dream. I just didn't think it would never end. <laughs> I, I thought it would end at some point, but it, clearly that is not their intention capitalism gotta capitalize oh yeah big fan of the uh uh tiktok of the uh capitalism really popped off the day <laughs> such a stupid <laughs> such a stupid thing for me to say but i i love that one uh, new install uh sorry an xbox september update rolled out uh earlier this week new install options with storage you can customize the color of your series 2 xbox button which is very cool for me and then you can also uh there's also a revamp of your games and app section you'll be noticing that's different of course, you do have to manually install it if you don't have uh, auto updates installed, so go check it out. Uh, I don't have anything uh, to say about this next one. Ted Lasso Jones, FIFA 23, tw- uh, 2023. I don't watch that show, but it seems like people were very excited, so congratulations. I, I thought he was a football manager, so I-, I-, I was very confused. I was like, why is he doing soccer? Oh, he is a football manager. Oh, he is. Oh. Football manager. Oh, okay. Well, that's the whole thing. Oh, my God. That's the conceit of the joke because he was a football coach. <laughs> oh, that is the joke. Yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's the whole thing. I never actually watched the show either. I don't care about this. I don't play FIFA. Me either. But I do think it's funny that there are going to be some serious actual football fans who see Ted Lasso are like, what the fuck? Where's my actual clubs that I want yeah. in this game? Yeah, I, I don't see this actually yeah. being a, some sort of big deal for people who actually buy the games. Mm-hmm. Cyberpunk sees a huge resurgent with the recent release of the new Netflix show. This is via Benji Sales on Twitter. CG Project has announced every day this week Cyberpunk, and this I believe is still true as of today. Cyberpunk has had a, a huge 1 uh, million daily players. This follows Cyberpunk hitting number one best selling game on Steam last week, reaching highest peak of current players since early January 2021, of course, when the game came out. Very, very huge deal for them. Congrats to the team. I do think they deserve it now, although, of course, they are the ones who ruined the game, so it's hard to feel bad for him. But uh, I'm very happy for the devs who kept uh, working hard, although I think their company has lost like two thirds of their value since that happened. So I imagine they definitely regret doing that. Uh, it seems like Diablo 4 beta gameplay footage leaked the same day Grand Theft Auto 6 leaked, so no one cared at all no one even talked about it <laughs> so if you care it's out there although the there is a closed beta very soon with an open beta happening next year so if you want to see it i'm sure it's out there go check it out i saw quick glimpses again i i i think i tweeted it on the day i was like diablo 4 footage leaked and no one cares like the, yep. if if you want your stuff leaked do it around Grand Theft 6 because no one will care <laughs> wait for something that big a deal to happen i guess but uh, that's pretty much it for a rapid fire. Of course, I start the show with a single question that I ask my co-host, and that is, of course, Emmett Watkins. What 
have you been playing? I've been playing a lot of this baby. Oh, oh there it is. Damn, that's really pretty. Like, I don't know why, yeah, but it's yeah. like coming really a, good through the camera. There's a glare on the screen because yeah. I didn't have enough money for the most expensive one. Um, I will say, though, I'm sad because I pre-ordered this thing when I had my old job when I was broke. And now I'm slightly not broke. So I could have afforded like the second tier at least. But now nah, I got the 64 gig. It's fine. Um, yeah, I've been Steam Decking, y'all. Um, for the audio listeners who did not see me hold that up, yeah, I've been Steam Deck. Um, got the Steam Deck around Tuesday last week. Uh, or no, I got it Wednesday last week. And it, I've just been off to the races ever since. I've gotten everything running on here. Uh, so I have a bunch of Steam games. I've actually bought a couple Steam games additionally since getting this thing because I want to play them on deck. Uh, today, I just bought Moonlighter Control. Oh, Ultimate Moonlighter. Fuck yeah, you yeah. did. I love that game. I've been seeing I've been seeing Greg talk about Moonlighter forever, and I think I have it for free on PlayStation Plus or something, but I'm like, nah, I want it on deck. So it's, it's a it's a right very now. it's a very good mo uh, mobile game. I, I, like that is a great handheld game. I think you'll like that a lot. Excellent. Excellent. So I have that recommendation was highly sought after. So I'm going to try that out. Bought Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. <laughs> um, I played, oh, I played like half awesome of it on game. PS3. Yeah, it's a great game. I played a lot of it on PS3, never got through it there. And now I'm just like, well, I have it on deck. So fuck it. I'm just going to go here. Achiever, uh, he control. uses his feet to cut things sometimes. Yes, it's really cool. It's and like doing awesome. a little slow motion slicey thing. I Oh, man, I it's platinum. You know, I love platinum. Oh, yeah. So I got to go for it. Um, of course, Control Ultimate Edition. I, I platinum control in the past, but I never played a DLC, so this is going to be an opportunity oh, to replay it's pretty good all DLC. that. The DLC, see how it ties into Alan Wake and all that stuff. Um, and yeah, I've that's more or less all of the actual Steam games I've purchased recently. Oh, Tales of Rise also purchased. Will I play it anytime soon? No. Lord knows. It's no. very intimidating. But I have it. I will be ready for it at some point. But um. The other thing I've been doing on here is just seeing what else can I get on this thing. I have, okay, so let me go to my, <laughs> I have a lot of folders on this thing because not only, I got the lowest tier version, the 64 gig, but I have a fuck ton of uh, space on a memory card. I got a 512 gig memory card on here. Jesus. So because of that, I put a bunch of emulators on here. Yes. <laughs> the whole reason now, I want to buy one. Oh, yeah, it's great. Like they have there's a software called Emu Deck and all you yep. do is just go to the website, click it, run it. And it does it literally automatically. Fuck it. I didn't have to think about anything. It just installed all the. Emulators. That's my favorite thing. Not thinking. Of... Yeah. It. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I love that. Thing. Um, it sets all the controls by itself, sets it to full screen, adds them to your Steam library. So you don't even have to go into desktop mode. That's so fucking cool. Like. It does everything there. All you need to do is make sure you have your BIOS files and make sure you have the ROMs that you want to play. And I had both of those easy. I got PS2 working. I got a bunch of PS2 games on here. It's quite frankly insane. Actually, I don't. it's not insane. I have 30 of them on here. Um, recently, I've been playing. I played a little bit of Kill Switch, a little bit of Cold Winter, a little bit of God Hand, Burnout 3, Dead to Rights 1, and Dark Watch. Fuck. I've been trying those out. That's awesome. Um. I got the PSP emulator going too. Really, I've only touched Pursuit Force and Grumman. Uh, what is it called? Grumman, a monstrous adventure, a random Japanese game that I had fond memories playing the demo of back in the day. So I said, I'm going to pick it up here. Um, and the only other game console I have on here, as far as emulation goes, I have one GameCube game just so I could play the, the first person shooter Geist. <laughs> It, I think it was like a launch title. Yeah. It was a first person shooter with ghosts and you could possess anything. I, I, I um, think I remember this. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I, the only reason I'm interested in it, I saw a video about it and I was like, oh, that seems cool. That's the only GameCube game I'm going to download. And so here I am. Perhaps I'll go back for Metroid Prime, but I haven't made my decision on that yet. I'm, um, yes. No, no, no. Please, Good please, question. please. The last thing I'll say, because I'm not actually talking about a game, it's just this thing. Um, the last thing I'll say is I've also gotten all my streaming stuff to work on here too. So I have a Stadia app on here. I have my Xbox Cloud Gaming app on here. Fuck. I have. It took me a while to figure out how to do it, but I got PS5 Remote Play working on this thing too. I've been playing Saints Row again through Remote Play for the last couple of days. Um, and how does that work? How, not sorry, not how does it work? How does that feel? So playing a where a controller is the primary method, you need triggers and all this nature. Does it feel good? 
yeah, it feels good. I'll say for it depends on what you're streaming. Xbox streaming has it pretty much down pat where there is a when I say noticeable amount of lag, I mean like if you move the stick and wait, you can see it. But when you're actually playing it, you don't feel it really at all. Okay. So I've been playing stuff like Fortnite through Cloud Fine and all that's been wonderful. On PS5, it's the same type of thing where if you sit there and look and study it, then yeah, you can totally um you can totally get on that and realize it's moving a little slower. But for me, it's been working fine playing Saints Row through, through Steam Deck. I will say because it is, um, they, they do some interesting remapping things because it has like the back paddles on the thing. Um, for, the, for the streaming app I have for PS5 for the remote play, it triggers some of the actions to the back paddles. So sometimes I'll just squeeze a back paddle and it'll be like, are you sure you want to close the app? And I'm like, oh no, I didn't realize that was the, re- the remap. Um, and same thing for Stadia too, where some of the like to get out into the Stadia menu or the back button. So I just got to keep that in mind. But um, it runs perfectly great. Like everything is great on this thing. It is literally like any type of game I want to play, I can play on this thing. And that's I didn't even say I've gotten my Epic Games launcher running, or not the launcher, but I gotten that library access on here. So I've been playing. I actually had control through Epic and then just booted it up to see if it would run. And it runs really great on Steam Deck. So I decided to buy it for actual Steam. I uh, got my GOG library on here too. Like it's all perfect. And you can get all this stuff running pretty easily. It didn't take me too much effort. And yeah, if you have the ability to get yourself a Steam Deck, highly recommend it. I will say, don't go for the cheapest option because Steam likes to install a lot of shaders so that these games look nice. And all the shaders installed by default on the internal memory. So, like, I have three gigs left of the 64 gigs Whoa. because shaders just ate all of it up. Right. And I can delete them, but it's just going to reinstall them when I try to launch the game again. So, keep that in mind. But other than that, it's a good, it's a very good device. I, I, nothing but praise for it. Okay. That's very cool. This is something I've wanted. It's just, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to set it up. It's going to be awesome. I'll play like an hour and then I'll never touch it again. So I'm trying to make sure I will actually use it before I buy it because I know myself I will buy it and never use it. But do very, you have I do a very Steam much. library at all? Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I got, pretty, I got a pretty nice one. Okay. If you have a Steam library, then yeah, I would say just fucking go for just it. Just go for it. Because here's the thing. Consume. Yes, I've been buying some extra games on Steam like a good two or three hundred games in my library already and of those several hundred games how many are great on deck i have 150 or 158 that are either verified for steam deck or playable on steam Deck. so it's pretty good a big bonus of this thing is without any emulation without going into desktop mode doing none of the quote-unquote hackier type things you have a whole library here if you've been building up over the years instantly so yes it's 400 or 500 or however much you want to pay for the model but you have a library instantly. And that's what's the craziest thing about this, where, yeah, I'm buying new games. I was booting up a, a story about my uncle, a game I started in, like, 2016 and didn't play since 2018. My save is still there. <laughs> like, it's copying all this stuff. It's, like, the same thing where um back when they added, like, uh, I think Elder Scrolls Morrowind to Game Pass. Uh, or, no, it was Oblivion to Game Pass. And you could stream it on your phone. And people were playing that game with their save from like 2005 that's cool like it's it's super cool and i've just been playing a bunch of stuff on here games that i haven't touched in forever marlo briggs and the mask of death like why is that shouldn't even be a thing but it runs really well on here and yeah a lot of things are good one of the I reasons i want to buy it is solely for the purpose of being able to play sweet it in five literally just that game mobily yeah. like i respect that sweet in five is yeah. so um and it's it's still stuck on the ps2 and it will probably be forever until we see that game actually come to something, but I love it. If you ever want, hey, get yourself a deck. I'll show you the links, man. I've been I've been all over the I, internet. I, I've been on Proton DB. I'm I'm go. about this close. I mean, I'm 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 pretty close to to just being like, you know what, fuck it. I might I might do it for a Christmas present myself. I don't know. There you go. I have That's been cool. having a very Emmett Watkins Jr. week. I wanted to play Ooh. two things before we had this episode together, just just so I could have a conversation with you about them. One being Midnight Fight Express, having a great time with that so far. I'm about f- five to six levels deep. Very strange story. I very much like how weird it is. I like that he's just naked and, and, and being interrogated by cops at the beginning of the game. And it's like, oh, yeah, I'll tell you about it. And it looks like this drone reactivated him. He's like some sort of crazy spy or something. It's very cool. 
I'm having fun. Oh, yeah. I do see what you mean. I did get the upgrade that lets you like zoop around the room by hitting X, mm -hmm. like hit hitting people. And wow, does that feel very exactly. satisfying? Doing like a backflip and punching someone in the mouth is very cool. Um, I am trying to like get the high score. That's already addicting. Uh, I, my first, I think my first level was like a C. And I was like, whoa, I, I'm not doing good. And then I was like, oh, they want you to like be as different as possible. Like try to get as many variety as possible. So I've been doing that and that's kind of satisfying. I'm still very early, but I I like where it's going. It it, it feels kind of it, it kind of has that kinetici that that seafood kind of had that I very much like. It's just a exaggerated seafood kind of. Ooh, I can't wait until like what really makes that game is once you build out the skill tree and you have all the abilities. So and, many, so many and, skills. Oh yeah, and it seems like a lot. Ultimately, it's it's a lot of like tweaking existing skills in that tree. But God, when you when you get access to like there's like a rope that you can use to like get over here enemies. Oh, and that's stuff cool. like that it's it's you're gonna have a really good time by the end of that game the combat is just impeccable and then the second game a I, I, game i've never played but i just was like i have to play this so i can prepare for the third game and that's bayonetta and i am having <laughs> such a good time it is like preposterous how fun this game is oh what is he about to bring into the void just, of space I saw this in the corner. Wait, oh I oh oh yeah your pop you can kind of yes, get it. It's a, kind of get it. Oh, there oh, we go. Oh, there, there we go. go. Oh, put put oh, your oh, fingers oh, no. on it. I think that'll help. But there you go. Yeah. yeah. Bayonetta pop. Bayonetta yeah. pop. Yeah. I, I didn't even I know that existed, cool. by the way. Um, <laughs> but uh, and I worked at a GameStop. I should know every pop in fucking existence. Um, oh, it, it's new. They oh, that's made it recent. Okay, that's why. But uh, I wanted to get ready for the third one because the third one looks just frankly just so good, and I keep hearing great things about it, especially when that preview event went live last week. Um, and I was like, you know what? Let me let me try the first one again. I have tried it before. It was a so what I did was I played the 360 version on the Series X. Wasn't terrible, but I bought the it was on sale for like the ten remastered. bucks the remastered version. And I didn't read up what it did differently, but it already feels much better. I don't even know it's, what they remastered, but I bought it and it feels way way more. Uh, I guess fluid is the word optimize things of this nature like it feels so much nicer on this versus playing the 360 port yeah I'll, I'll tell you that's exactly how i played bayonetta one the first time through xbox through the remaster uh 4k 60 that so that's what you're getting there oh uh, that makes way cool. more sense i was like is this higher yeah. frame i wanted to look it up before i set it on there uh, so i didn't know but jesus yep. feels good yeah it's 4k 60 and um yeah it's incredible the only negative i'll say about playing any of the more upgraded versions there's a really cool feature in Bayonetta where in the loading screens, they just give you control of Bayonetta to practice combos. So I noticed this and I was like, it's loading so fast. I can't do anything. Yeah. It loads. <laughs> I see it. And then it goes away. And I was like, Ooh, wow. What an interesting evolution that not for many people probably thought of, of these in game loading things that now you can't do because the game is up like that. Exactly. And so that's one, not negative, but just one thing you're missing out on. Yeah. But yeah, that is an impeccable version of an impeccable game. I I will tell you right now, Bayonetta, once it hit Nintendo consoles, once it became a Nintendo franchise, Bayonetta is way more approachable. That first game can be a bitch. Now, it takes a while. Interesting. It takes a while for it to reveal itself to be difficult. But like, there's one sequence where... There, there's going to be a sequence somewhat deep into the game. I'm going to say like 60% through the game where you'll, you'll think, okay, there's these guys that are flying that are very far away out in the distance. I'm supposed to shoot them with my guns, I guess. And you're going to try and shoot them. No, what you're actually supposed to do. And they don't tell you this. There are two turrets in the room. You're supposed to get on one of the turrets and shoot at them from a distance. And then when they start shooting at you, you're supposed to hop off that turret and walk to the other turret on the opposite corner and then shoot them from a distance again and alternate between those turrets because you will die if you sit in any of those turrets. The fuck? The that is like just a piece of obtuse game design that I don't love. But then also the actual combat that is actually the fun part of Bayonetta. Like the combat is impeccable. Yes. Dodging with which time is great. Yes. Upgrade. We're going to get some really. Now, I will say one another thing about Bayonetta 1. They don't just give you all the weapons. In order to get the weapons, you have to like search for them. Uh, when I beat Bayonetta the first time, I only had one alternate weapon to her. I didn't brand, even know there was like, alternate weapons. There's like four. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, she has. Um, well, she. I think she has like some equivalent to like a nunchuck, but their guns or something. She has that. 
Uh, she has a giant samurai sword, like something straight out of like, like near. So that, yeah, something like near. Yeah. So I use that a lot because that's the only other weapon I unlocked. She has her random regular fists. She has ice skates that she just like glides around and like slices people up with her feet. Um, and she has one other, I think, that I'm not remembering. It might be like some big axe or something. But yeah, all those weapons, you have to like search for secrets in order to get those new weapons in the first game. So that's going to be maybe be a little bit diligent if you want new weapons. Otherwise, okay. combat can get a little stale. But even with just one weapon, you're going to be doing a lot of crazy set pieces. You're going to be fighting new enemies almost constantly. Like they're going to keep it pretty fresh for you, even if the way you interact with that stuff is going to be similar without those new weapons so those are things i'll say combat's going to get really tough rely on the on the dodging there are going to be some enemies that won't even let you trigger slow motion if you dodge right so you got to just be by that gotta point you should be good enough yeah you got to get good you got to get good but it's worth getting good yeah like, i might watch a guide for the weapons because i definitely don't want to miss weapons if that's something i can miss yeah um i yeah. i will say that is exciting because that many different weapons and I'm, i already feel very versatile in like what i could do that's pretty crazy so i'm gonna have it a whole other set of combos and things that's very good oh, yeah i will say this you is one of the i would oh wow really yeah. jesus Christ. yeah i will yeah, say i will say this is one of the rare titles that i feel like adopted the dmc formula and Perfected it to a point where it's almost at some points to me better than some of the DMC games I've played. And I'm a huge fan of Devil Cry. I love 4 and I love 5. But there are some points in Bayonetta so far that I've played. I'm like, wow, this definitely learned a lot from Devil Cry. And it learned it so much that it's adopted in a way that at some points better, I feel like, than, than oh. some of the, especially some of the early ones. I, I, I didn't fall in love with 1 and 2 like a lot of people did. Um, and I haven't played 3. But I love being able to summon this hair demon lady or whoever i have oh, yeah. that is awesome whenever i whenever i see a giant fist come through the screen and hit something <laughs> endorphins <laughs> my friend everywhere so cool oh yeah i love how yeah. I, I because it's just it you could just tell it's very japanese this matrix just how sexualized she is but it's part of her character so she's like owning it and it's so exaggerated yeah. that it's like believable almost because it's just like utter nonsense like <laughs> I'm reminded of when he, she was in a bar and the guy was <laughs> the guy gave her the guns that she uses throughout the game and he goes to make a drink and he like starts dancing and making a shake oh, and yeah. then she throws the guns <laughs> in the air and like does backflips and puts them on and then like and then like they have the drink and the gun like attached to them as and they gra really grab fun. the drink. This game is yeah. nuts and it's very fun. It is one of those things where I just have a smile on my face half the game because it's just stupid fun. Um, and I very much like the demon that eats things. I ate uh, oh, this yeah. kind of angel monkey thing. That was very fun. Just wait. There's one set. There's like a good. There's one set piece that I, this is. It doesn't spoil anything, but it'll just give you an idea. There's one set piece. It actually, it's an entire boss fight that takes place in the ocean. What? The and it is yeah. Play. And it is some of the most like right there. I was like, oh, is this an all timer? <laughs> like wow. and that that was like what maybe 50 percent through the game like maybe right halfway i got to that boss fight and i'm like this might be an all-timer for me and okay. then it escalates like bayonetta is one of the games where i'm surprised it even has a sequel because it just escalates and escalates and escalates and gets so crazy by the end of it literally the last moment you actually control in the game is one of the most over-the-top insane things i've ever seen in a video game to the point where it is like it is delightfully insane like it it, it doesn't jump the shark it jumps the entire ocean <laughs> it jumps like, all of the sharks crazy. in the ocean wow exactly it is incredible and i i promise you i am not being hyperbolic with how insane it is now will that hit with you we'll find out it seems like you're already liking it enough but it is that crazy i can guarantee that bayonetta 2 it's a refinement bayonetta 3 looks like it's going to be another refinement but bayonetta 1 feels like they already taught themselves in the first game. Yeah, what was I surprised? Well, sorry, <clears throat> let me clarify for it. What I was surprised by when playing this game is so far it has a very solid foundation. I am shocked that there are two other games after this. So how yes. how do they go up from here or without it feeling like just Bayonetta one again? I I is probably what's most excited for me is just seeing yeah. where do they go from this because they already have solid foundation. Do they build on top of this? Are there different weapons? Is there a Devil May Cry esque thing where it's kind of the similar kind of thing? Like 
the point I'll it's the, for, sort of similar and you're getting new weapons or something i don't know but i'm, I'm excited uh, yeah for bayonetta 2 it's less that um because they can't go as crazy as they did with bayonetta 1 a second time they just can't do that because you've done it already right and so what they do in bayonetta 2 they do uh, stuff that's equally as over the top but in a different way like the narrative what's actually happening is over the top but the moment to moment things you are doing aren't quite as crazy as what you did in Bayonetta 1. But like the places you go and the things you see are probably just as crazy, but it's more of a thematic insanity rather than a mechanical insanity. Yeah, there's like that. Makes- yeah, yeah. I will say the narrative so far, I don't really know. And also, I don't really care because I just want to play the game. But I'm hoping the narrative does get a little stronger because I just, I, I so far, I'm like, uh, okay what's happening i don't really understand there's some plot twists you'll um, find out some plot twists you'll find out some secret reveals it's not the craziest story in the world but it's a good enough story to keep you engaged with the insanity of everything else and it's cool that her hair is her power as, as, yeah. as far as i'm not wrong i'm pretty sure that it's like her hair is like yeah. what is which she's weave, using. yeah, yeah it's from which weave. i love it <laughs> Rumor <laughs> roundup <laughs> rumor roundup uh we're going to move that um so these this one is not necessarily a rumor i didn't want to make it a sh- uh, thing because it would be very abrasive to put in the actual show because it's technically allegations but he admitted to it let's just cover it okay probably the dumbest thing i've ever seen in this industry happened this week dan allen a youtube personality outed himself this week as an anonymous game industry leaker we have covered on the show before his name was the real insider how do we know it was him? Well, he told us multiple times. As early in the week, we saw him accidentally post a response to a follower from the wrong account, his personal one, which caused multiple people, including Jason Schreier, the detective himself, to delve into the past posting on both accounts to reveal both The Real Insider and Dan Allen posting extremely similar content around the same time and also have the same writing style. So it seems The Real Insider was just a YouTuber leaking information from early screenings of things blatantly breaking embargoes and NDAs. To make things even worse for both him publicly and more important legally, he admitted it to it. Posted after being called out by many people, he cheated from his official account, quote, I'm sorry to everyone for my actions, end quote, before then deleting both the Real Insider and his official Twitter account. Wow. I mean, I want to know your, uh, uh, (laughs) I want to go to you right after I say my piece because I can't believe this guy has the gall to not only break NDAs, not only break embargoes, but to admit it to everyone. Oh, you're going to get sued. Why did you first off do any of this? And then third, if you got if you actually did it, just delete it and don't bring it up, bro. Why did you admit to it? That's fucking way worse, man. Now they can take yeah. you to court. What is this? Uh, first off, you don't break NDAs and embargoes. Second off, it looks like people in the industry kind of knew. That's the whoever the real insider was. They were, there was a, it was a person coming to these events because like the timing was just way oh, too okay. on the nose. I saw Paul Tassi say like he kind of figured that. Why did no one say it? I don't know. I feel like that's kind well, of like, everyone in is like, oh, in hindsight, yeah, I guess that makes a lot of sense. I was like, mm. everyone uh, was say, everyone yeah. at the time was saying everyone thought he was a back back end YouTube uh, uh, that's him? producer. Yeah, they all thought the real insider was a back end YouTuber able to skim thumbnails and video titles before they went live. And that's not true at all. So that's interesting that everyone's saying that that was true or they thought that but now everyone's like oh it, it was obvious it was a guy just breaking into you. i was like no one said that so i don't really believe it i think that's more of a hindsight thing all that being said this dude fucked up majorly i can't st- i still am in, in awe that this guy is i don't mean to put this in a mean way but re- i mean you were really stupid for doing half of this but you did all of it so i can't imagine and then third like you did really fuck this up for everybody now like I mean, no wonder people are secretive. Like, it, it, I understand, like, they have PR cycles and things, and I, I like when things are kind of let out, let out a little early. I like when Jeff Grubb talks. I like when we have a, a very vocal person kind of breaking stuff and things. It's fun. It's good to talk about. And I hate how secretive the game industry can be in sometimes. But to blatantly break embargoes and NDAs 
is something uh, a, a stupidity that I am in awe of. Yeah, that's fucking. It's it's impressive. Like honestly, as a songwriter once said, by the name of Offset, they'll do anything for clout. That's true, so. man. <laughs> Clearly, this dude just wanted attention, and yeah, exactly. I don't. I would have murdered for his account. For that I would have fucking yeah. murdered for his yeah. access. He he was going to these events. He was talking with everyone. He was in the industry. He was able to to openly talk. People knew him. I would have punched a baby in the face. I'm just kidding. I wouldn't have really done that. <laughs> I, but I'm serious. I would have done it so much to be able to even get a a, a tenor of his uh, access they got. And this dude just <laughs> blew it all and smoke. Just tweeted it out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the thing that's craziest about this. Like, he just did it for clout. He literally said in his apology video, I just did it for the thrill. I just did it to watch the numbers go. And it's like, Again, dude. dude, how little do you think of yourself if you are going to throw away this actual career you had just for a couple extra retweets. Like it's that sad. Number one, number two, I'm sure when you were saying like people in the industry figured it was someone going to these events, I think that's easy to figure out because of the timing and everything. Yeah. But then it's a question of, all right, who at this event? And then it becomes, all right, if we say something, cause I'm sure like, you know, folks at Ubisoft and all the other places, elite stuff, they can put two and two together. Yeah, but they're not dumb. It, but then it's a case of how 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 easy is it to find the one person? Or are we just going to punish the whole group? Yeah, because that's the biggest disappointment here, where it's going to fuck it up for other YouTubers, other people in the industry who just need that access to be able to do their job. And now he's making it where the trust between developer and content creator is going to be a little bit more frayed because of this, because of this like seed of distrust he's planting. <laughs> And that seed of distrust is probably what kept him from being seen all this time. And yeah, it, it's just it's just a bummer all around. I, I don't know what's going to happen to this dude. I can't help but feel like he's about to get like, I forget his name, but who's that guy from IGN who will copy his reviews? From oh, IGN? Jesus. This is like four years ago. It was like an Italian name, I think. Uh, go ahead. I'll, I'll grab his name. Yeah, like because whenever I see this, uh, people do stuff like this where they're like, you know, effectively blacklisted. Like I'm sure he's lost his relationships with like the the actual game companies, the Ubisofts of the world, and you know places he leaked from. But like, yes, he was an independent YouTuber. Do you think there's gonna be a website in hell that's gonna take this man after he's proven? I mean, he's done. Yeah, he he can't keep a secret, a, a professional secret for anybody. So like, he's he's out of here. Uh, and like I said, it reminds me of the guy who, you know, couldn't get uh, who was copying all of his reviews from other places because that guy has proven a fundamental thing that he can't get right. He can't actually write shit. He can reword shit from other people all day, but he can't actually write. So who's going to take you if they can't trust that you can't do the fundamentals? So, yeah, once you fail a fundamental thing in this industry or really in any industry, but games we're talking about here, then you're done. Like, there's no other place for you. He's going to have to get a regular job like the rest of us. Yep. In all likelihood. Um, but yeah. The name was Philip Mewson. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I remember he was trying to come back on YouTube, and I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, he tried He tried to lean into it. It didn't work. Uh, he, he yeah. like, re-released the Dead Cells review, which is what got him caught. He, co he copied Boomstick Gaming, which is another YouTuber, and wrote. And what's crazy is he, like, stole an a review which is literally someone's thoughts like you couldn't write thoughts my man i don't know yeah and he did that a lot apparently it's the easiest essays in high school <laughs> yeah I, I mean that is another like i just don't, i don't even I just yeah, don't, i don't get it i remember he copied like a fifa switch review from yep. like nintendo life as well yep so it's like oh you had a history like, dude program. you copy refuse like how God. inept can it's you be <laughs> yeah i mean fuck i can yeah sure you stole like math fucking answers but like you're <laughs> you stole thoughts like what the fuck i think he was actually interviewed too by colin moriarty i believe so if everyone wants to see like his side i think he was a he got a uh uh i think he was interviewed like a year ago or something that um, sounds about 
right? Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to check out his side of the story, I'll put that in quotes, his side of the story, you can go check out what he thought, what he said. Um, Probably the same side. <laughs> it's, it's someone else's side copied. <laughs> there seems to be a new iteration in the next PS5 coming in the way of a new model of the same PS5 we may know right now. And it's known as the D chassis internally, and it isn't an extreme departure for what we know of the PS5 currently, but there is one huge difference. It seems they're taking a modular approach to the latest model featuring a detachable hard drive. According to several sources telling Inside Gaming, or sorry, Insider Gaming, there will be a new model of the PS5, but it will sport a detachable disk drive. The drive will attach to the console via a USB-C cable on the back of the console. The sources did, oh, excuse me, the source did say the drive doesn't look like it's attached, but it looks like the original model does now. But we will have to wait and see if that is the case. Uh, pretty big deal here. If if they're actually going with this approach, uh, I'm assuming they're trying to save as much money as possible on these systems because they're probably eating it really hard. But also, I am a bit wary on if it looking modular or not, because that does not sound attractive. If it looks exactly what the PS5 model looks like right now, but and there's literally just a modular thing, I can't imagine that looking great in an already kind of ugly looking system. But we will have to wait and see as just a cable connecting to a USB-C in the back of the console is eh. And also, I'm not loving that they have to cut yet another thing of the PlayStation 5 if when they're upping how much it costs so why are you having to break it down further i thought that was the whole point very confusing a little bit all around but again this is a rumor and some speculation so we don't even know if it's fully true or not i mean i'll say real quick i actually like that this thing is real i, I like the idea of modularity is what i want more than like because if you buy a digital playstation 5 right now you're locked into it you can add a new drive or whatever but you can never have a disk drive in that thing and that's final um, having this modularity lets you have that flexibility of yes, PlayStation Store is great. They have sales sometimes, but like if you're on GameFly, you're getting you're getting these games for absurd prices. I think Seafood's like eighteen dollars right now, and yep. you're not getting that on PSN for at least another two years. So, I, I think people who want that modularity, who want that expanded ability of features to be able to upgrade to a disc drive later, is great. I I, I honestly hope that whatever version that is that's coming replaces the digital version that people can have that choice rather than getting locked into a choice because they didn't have the extra 100 when they had to buy the console. So, so I, I will quickly go back on what I said. I should have probably been more clear. I don't mind that this exists, but I hate if, if this is the case, not fully certain if it is or not, but if the $500 console that you're buying is just a digital with a, a detachable uh, USB-C drive in it, that is a big turnoff for me. I would l I actually love that this thing exists just in theory as like an option. And hey, you know, you know, we get that some people had to buy digitals because some people, I mean, frankly, didn't have a choice when it launched. They were like, you know, maybe you went to GameStop or Walmart and they're like, oh, we have our digitals. You had to buy it. Now you're like stuck on digital things. I doubt they care that much, but maybe, maybe that is why they're doing it because they would they, they want you to buy digitally. They don't want you to buy physical. But if that is the case, yeah, I could. That, that's awesome. But if the five hundred dollar console is literally just the digital with a detachable hard drive, or sorry, disk drive. That sounds terrible. But I do like that this exists. Hmm. Fair enough. And also, again, they raised the fucking price of this thing. So, like, why are, why are we having to cut costs more? I don't know. I don't even know if it's a cost-cutting thing. I think it might just be, like, a giving consumers choice, because they didn't give them no the choice with the price. So That's true. Let's throw that, them a bone somewhere. That's true, but again... I, I think uh, I will definitely be on your side if the 500 console is not just a detachable disk drive. Everything I will say pre pretty much void if it just yeah. remains how it is. But if it is, I won't, I'm not going to like that very much. Understandable. It seems she did not survive the layoff as Indiana Froskerin Black, sorry if I butchered that, has been uh, bought out of the remainder of her contract and she has been let go from G4 following massive layoffs seen at the company. This is kind of an update to a prior story that we covered last week. Kotaku learned from several sources at G4 that this may have been related to the tweet following a layoff of more than 20 G4 employees saying simply, quote, I survived via a gif of a lizard smoking a cigarette. This is not the last departure as Kevin Prera, a long time in the original co-host of Attack of the Show, announced his departure. He did go on to say in a recent episode of the Attack of the Show that months ago he planned on leaving and his plan was to just help with the relaunch. Uh, I don't believe a word of that. G4 is also set to pivot from costly talk shows to smaller Twitch screens as an ongoing effort to cut costs continues. 
this is pretty quick. Huh. Um, I just thought this was interesting to bring up because um, she got massive hate for tweeting, I survived when a bunch of employees got laid off. Um, yeah. Pretty much in pretty bad taste there. This is also the um, woman behind the infamous G4 uh, misogyny tweet, or sorry, uh, speech that she gave on the show, uh, basically calling out misogyny in the industry, which I found interesting because she was doing it on G4. Um, if you uh, don't know what I mean, Google G4 20, uh, 2005, and you'll see what I mean by that. Um, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> uh so then, yeah <laughs> yeah yeah we all know i watched it too uh, and i thought that was a. Uh, it definitely is the uh definition of ironic when you talk about misogyny on g4 but aside from that I, again i never i'll never celebrate someone losing their job but i do find it uh very much in bad taste that she tweeted i survived literally the day of half of not a half sorry there's like 200 employees at g4 but like a a, a tenth of your people left or basically got laid off and people are actively leaving now i i really do think maybe you'll disagree here but i think um i think g4 is in 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 massive trouble here yeah i'm a little concerned um i'll, I'll say before i talk about g4 overall um i here's the thing it this is okay frost it, how do you say your name Froskerin? Froskerin, i believe is how you say yes Froskerin, okay Froskerin. um yeah i did not follow them before G4 uh, when they were announced as one of the hosts on G4. I was like, all right, cool. More, more, more literally doing the thing I asked G4 to do where I was like, I don't want to see a bunch of white men here. Like it was in the old one. Can yeah. We get some new voices. Agreed. And it was nice seeing, it was nice seeing them, you know, get part of the cast it, along with the black Okage and a lot of other folks that I like. Um, Gerard, but, Xavier Woods. Yeah. Very yeah. Cool. Yeah. All the really, really good cast they have going. And um, seeing this, like, I, I do feel like, because with that whole misogyny uh, speech that she gave, that was, it was ironic being on G4, but at the same time, G4 is no longer what it was in 2005. Correct. But also at the same time, I feel like because of that speech, she had a subsection of the G4 base that just did not like her and were very vocal about it. If I may interject so very quickly, in researching this, there's an entire side of YouTube that I always forget that just hate <laughs> on fucking people just hate on yes. people when i was reviewing i was just writing and finding out like stuff about this lady there are like many videos on youtube calling her out trying mm -hmm. to like shit on her and things and i was like whoa i always forget when there's people just dedicated to hating on things i'm like yo yeah, yeah i gotta yeah. relax there's way too many of the vi same kind of titles through different people mm -hmm. just like shitting on this lady and i get it and i wasn't yeah. a fan of it either but i'm not out here trying to like shit on her thread, like what the fuck a common thread is being an outspoken woman in the games industry you won't get that done to you yeah um, that's true that's a and, good point and frost was definitely one of those folks um so yeah, she had a subsection of people who did not like her extremely loudly. So when she tweeted the whole I survived thing, I really do think, now I think it was misguided to tweet that at all. I think, you know, I think she was thinking, oh, there's probably a lot of haters out yep. there who are hoping I was part of the, you know, part of the people yep. who got tossed out. And I'm sure she did that as like a fuck you to them. Yep. But not understanding that the primary people who are actually following you are the folks who are either just got laid off or related to people who got laid off. Those are the people in your circle, the people who are sorry for the people who got laid off. So you tweeting that comes off as tone deaf, even if in your head you were thinking, oh, I'm going to. Oh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a stick it to the haters. I get it. I kind of exactly. got that too. I was like, she probably, again, I don't know this lady, but I'm yeah. just assuming I try to give people benefit of the doubt. She probably didn't mean it in a negative sense. Like, ha, I'm still here. She probably was like, you know, to the, very interesting number of people making youtube videos about her i was like mm -hmm. again very fucking weird to like make videos like that um so, yeah. So, yeah just Overall, saying that yeah i just wanted to say that so i feel like that might have been the context there but it sucks that you know anyone's losing their job i know i just said the black okage he left a little while ago like a like a couple weeks ago so like a lot of people are going kevin Pereira. i feel like this for kevin and Adam Sessler also, who I'm not sure if Adam Sessler is even still there. I he, he, I'm that. pretty sure he is. Yeah. Okay. But I feel like for both of them, they were kind of just brought on board for this and they were doing completely other things and being totally fine with it. Um, I, I'm not sure what Kevin was doing, but he was doing something. He was having a decent life. 
um adam i know he was consulting stuff yeah he was like working on like random yeah consultant gigs which is pays a lot of money yeah and he i think he had like a company he was doing for consulting like he made a whole company so like he was clearly tied up with other shit so i wouldn't be surprised if a lot of these og g4 folks were only supposed to be here for maybe a year and didn't dip out um so in the case of kevin prayer when he says that i'm not surprised i i could believe that um but it just seems like overall G4 had a great launch, you know, great new studio, did everything right. I really feel mm. like they're doing everything correctly. Oh, I got to disagree with that right there. Let, let me say it like this. Okay, okay, like this. okay. I'll, I'll when say my G4, point after you finish with this. Okay, okay. When G4 was a thing on TV, it, it, it just came too early. Like that type of content that they made on G4 in like what, 2000 and when they shut down, like 11 or something? Uh, yeah, that should be. Uh, yeah, yeah, 2011, 2013. Right, let's say, I think it's 13. When they shut down in 2013, um, that was the type of content that I watched today on YouTube, on Twitch, on all that stuff. But they were too early, and the internet was starting to say, hey, we, we're on Twitch, we're on YouTube, we, all this shit that you get here, you can watch here without paying for the actual cable channel. And so they just they were just way too early on that and they didn't change fast enough. And so they got, you know, shut down. But I think when they did the relaunch where all of their shows were not only on TV, but also streaming on Twitch, and then they broke out the clips and everything for YouTube. That is exactly the way that I would have imagined when I was watching G4 originally as a kid. That's how you would have done it. That's the way that you do it so that no matter where you are, you're able to catch up on your favorite personalities or whatever and all that stuff. Now, the problem with G4 <laughs> is not because of how they're doing the content. It is the content itself, which is to say there's nothing bad about it. Like there's nothing bad about G4's content. Like I don't I do not want to shit talk anybody there because I like a lot of those personalities. I love the completionists. I love Austin. Uh, I was about to say Austin Walker. Austin Creed. <laughs> I love all these folks. Um, but like when it gets right down to it, Am I in the mood for a G for a X play style review of a game anymore where they're putting in jokes, they're being quippy about it, or am I just looking for either a really quick five minute video telling me if the game's good or not, or the three hour long Noah Caldwell Gervais essay on a game that really dives deep into it. Those are really the two things I'm interested in. If you're going to tell me about a game, I don't really care if you have jokes anymore. <laughs> And similar thing for like, you know, they got the crazy office and they've had a couple like announcements on G4. Like they haven't had an E3 yet, which I really do think would help them if they were able to go on location and cover something like that. I really do think that would have been a big boom for them. I, actually, they existed before this. Well, E3 didn't happen this year, so I, <laughs> I guess that makes sense. So like, I feel like that's the type of thing where back in the day, I really looked at G4 for like coverage of all of the E3 goings on and such. But even now, I can go to Kind of Funny for that. I can go to Easy Allies for that. I can go all these places. And, you know, it, it just seems like where X-Play and Attack of the Show and all that stuff used to be the version of all the stuff that exists on the internet now, when it comes back, it is now just another one of these things that's on the internet now. So I never want to say any other content's bad, but I just find myself not being attracted to it in the same way because it is no longer special by the metrics of everything else on the internet has caught up to that level. And so, yeah, that's just my opinion. So hopefully they still stick around, but all this cost-cutting news, it sounds like, oh man, this is the same type of talk that happened to Vane when that was a thing. So I'm, I'm a little concerned for him. Everything you just said was very, very well said. Um, and that's why I love uh, your personality. Uh, yeah, everything was very thorough. You're very thorough with everything. Uh, there's a couple things I want to pull very quickly. Since you, since you went specifically from the content perspective, something I can't speak on. So I, don't, I just don't watch them. Um, I just have too, I have too many things that I already watch. Uh, there's just no, no room for a G4. And to quickly uh, jump on that, I agree. They were too early. They were one of the only ones doing it at the time. It just wasn't sustainable on a network television show. But they're also now too late. They have both too early and now too late. They have they came they announced that they were coming back in 2020, July 24, 2020, far into the Patreon podcast era that we find ourselves in now. 
and they didn't actually yeah. launch until November 16, 2021. I have the dates right here. I'm, I'm not acting like I know that off the top of my head, but I have the dates right. <laughs> uh, and they actually did close in uh, late 2012, I believe. Um, so, all that being said, st speaking specifically from the financial side, since you covered their content so well, I, I can't put it any better. Speaking specifically from the financial side, in researching the show actually last week, um, but not finding it need to, to take over, but upon further thinking about and hearing other people discuss it as well, they have over 200 people working at G4. What the fuck are what? 200 people doing at G4? And I don't mean this to sound rude or come across as like, I don't think they should have jobs or anything like that. But what are they doing? With 200 people, I and again, I'm not making this mean, but for real, like, what what are they all doing? Is it like graphics packaging? Is it like oh, completely um, editing? You do not start, you can't start that way. You can't start while eat. I mean, that's eating money. That is so many people to pay for, and now you have to justify the cost year over year, and you have you already start way behind. In your financial earnings or telling or telling your bosses how much money you make or your expectations and things of that nature, when you have that many people on payroll, that's just a nut. That's nut. It's crazy. Fucking I can't believe it. I can't believe they I had mean, that many people. I, I think they're down to 170 or, or maybe a little less than that now, but they had an incredible amount of people uh, upon researching. I'll, I couldn't find a full, this is how many people, but it's like around 200 people. I'll say this. I'll say this. They got, they already got like what feels like a good 20 people that are just on camera. <laughs> like Jesus. they got a lot of personalities over there. They got close to 20 people that are just folks who were hosting <laughs> things or popping up on a show or whatever. Um, shout my out puppy. to the dog. <laughs> my puppy. Um, She's like, I want to yeah. get out. <laughs> She's done with her nap. <laughs> I'll let you out, sweetie. You can, you can keep going. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so they got a lot of people there in the staff uh, just being on camera. But at the end of the day, this is still like a very big, like cable network TV production. Like, that's the thing. Like, this is still cable TV. And they're, they probably got a cable TV budget to fill out a cable TV studio. Yeah. And they got a cable TV staff. So at the end of the day, or because when you said 200, I was like, that's crazy. Because I look at, once again, that's the template I'm going with. Kind of funny. Yep. They got what, a dozen people? Maybe some of the most popular people out there. I'm thinking, uh, who, uh, who, who can, who's has the highest Patreon? We have kind of funny, probably. We have Easy Allies. We have Last Stand Media. Min we have Min Max is up. There. Min Max. We have No Clip. We have. I mean, I could go fucking on and on. Mm -hmm. How many people work at those? Less I'll than 200, probably all together. That is true. Like less than 100, probably all together. To be honest, yeah, all those. But the thing about some of those where it once again, cable TV, you're expected to be live daily with something. I'm sure the I, I've been seeing it pop up on my YouTube subscriptions. G4 has insane output with not only are they live streaming all the time, they are putting out some type of edited piece of content all the time. Like almost every weekday, they have some piece of edited content and there's some type of live stream every single day. So I can very easily see, especially if you want to look professional, you know, you probably got hair and makeup, which I'm sure a lot of these like smaller Patreon type channels don't do like that type. You of know how like, much money I would pay for any of the people we mentioned to have hair and makeup. <laughs> that would be amazing <laughs> to see. Exactly. Like it's, it's that type of thing you're not think or that I wouldn't think about. Um, and it, it's I can easily see how that would balloon. But I also feel like this is another reason why. The whole, oh, we need to be on cable and we need to be on TV thing doesn't need to be, it doesn't need to be that way. We can very easily, like almost all the internet we consume, like all the Disney shows are through a screen. They're not on cable anymore. All the, like all of these big pieces of media that we care about. Yes, Atlanta's on network cable television. Most people's watching that on Hulu the next day. Same for Ab Abbott Elementary that's about to start a second season. Like we experience entertainment through the internet primarily and cable a second. So I understand that investors and stuff, they hear cable and they think about the big money cable production. So they give the money for a cable production. But when you talk about G4, 
it doesn't need to be a cable production. It can be because for the first couple months before leading into the launch in November, they were just doing live streams in like some random house they rented or or it wasn't a house. It was like some building, but they were just doing live streams and having fun. And it did seem like, all right, this is very much so a lower key version of G4. There's going to be a more grand unveiling sometime soon. But you could do that and be successful. You keep your overhead low that way. And if the people are funny enough or entertaining enough, if they just like watching these personalities, that's what makes it hit. But I'm even now I'm starting to think back. How much of G4 did I like because I love the personalities and how much of it was because you couldn't get this content anywhere else on on anything. So, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head there. Again, this is not to yeah. disparage anyone there. There's probably a lot of talented people there. Again, I can't speak because oh, I, yeah, I don't certainly. watch their stuff. I've only heard of a few people. Jared Pleasionist, huge deal. I love Austin Creed on fucking anything. I will literally watch him cut grass. Yeah. That dude's fucking entertaining. Yeah. Um, and like Kevin Ferrer is still funny. Adam Sessler is yeah. still, you know, I like. I Adam like Sessler is, is a crazy movie. grandpa of the industry. I still, I'll tell you, he's like, he uh, is, he's yeah. like, um, fuck, what's his name? Damn it. God of War guy. Uh, David Jaffe. He's like David Jaffe. Oh, oh, like just like this is your crazy grandpa that just screams at clouds. I love it. it, well, it those David are like Jaffe's the two. A little bit. David Jaffe's a little bit more on the wild side. Adam Sessler. Adam will Sessler's like, pretty wild. Have you seen his Twitter account? That dude's pretty look, fucking crazy. Adam Sessler is very wild, but I feel like often Adam Sessler's heart is in the right place, but he just like goes too far with shit, <laughs> and he's like, yeah, All right, I buddy, mean, you shouldn't. You shouldn't have gone there. You shouldn't have even done that. <laughs> he I said some crazy shit. Oh yes! Yeah. Oh, I know. I know. I, and again, I loved him back in the day. I watched X Play. I liked when he did his. Uh, again, it, regardless of the crazy shit, I this is very nostalgic when he was like four out of five. Are you kidding me? Like, are you yeah, kidding me? Yeah. That that brings a smile like, to my face immediately. But of course, I can point out that that dude's that's probably that's crazy funny. now. Yeah, <laughs> David Jaffe. I'm like from top to bottom. Like, yeah, God of War was great, but like, you're the type of dude who made Drawn to Death in like his forties, <laughs> like. <laughs> I I don't I don't know if I trust a man who has done that, but at, at least Adam Sessler doesn't have a demerit like that. But he's got some other demerits. Mm, yeah. Long story short, um, yeah, I, some of these personalities I like, but at the end of the day, there are too many personalities on the internet. I have already attached myself to others. I don't know if I need to reintroduce myself to these that I've already closed that chapter of my life on. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I. I hope G4 hits. I hope people like it. I, I feel like they are really hitting it with um they got this one really popular streamer who has a show on G4. And you know, they often get like Hassan, Pokimane, all those big streamers on that show too. So they had Amaranth they on before. Yeah, Am She's a huge They did an interview with Amaranth. Yeah, obviously. yeah. Um, so yeah, they they have some pull, but I just don't know. In a in a life and time where like Hassan can get just as many views with bringing Amaranth on by the himself. Show, it, by himself, by himself, just Amar without Amaranth, yeah, and he can just without a set, without nothing, same amount of viewers, yeah, or even more often, yep. probably. Yeah, so, it's just we, it's just been over that personality. We have it in like spades that personality driven content that is like you come for them, but you also come for the views, and, and but it's just it's it's overtaken. Now, looking at their YouTube, of course, you can't judge financials from YouTube views at all, but just speaking broadly. They range anywhere. Their most common is about four to to six k, seven k. Their highest fifty five k. I'm seeing um, because they have popular streamers on. I see Nico Lull uh, on the fifteen fifty five k. I imagine she's the majority of that. Uh, so they're definitely trying to very smartly gain traffic that way. It just doesn't seem like people are staying. They're not retaining. I think of kind of funny, kind of that way, where like they've kind of always they've been pretty stagnant in terms of how big they are and that could be a number of things that could be just the way they are doing things of that nature but there's a huge difference between kind of funny and g4 because uh g4 yeah. pays for over 100 people that is true that was a great so, conversation yeah. that was a great conversation yeah, we'll see what happens with G four. My yeah. heart goes out to the staff. Hopefully, they hopefully the ones who remain will survive for Jeez, longer. Hopefully. Um, and I'm praying for those folks who lost their jobs to land on their feet. Yeah, yeah. If we start seeing more people go away, I, 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 I at that point, I'm gonna be like, eh, we might be losing just them now again. Yeah. And then again, just as a reminder, that's barely a year after they launched. They're doing all of this, so it hasn't even been a year yet. Yeah. 
More NVIDIA leaks are coming true as Sackboy is spotted by SteamDB, which Skim Steam's database for new releases being officially announced. Uh, that's just important to point out. We knew this when the video leak, they accidentally posted, I think, a store page back in, I think, last October or something. Like, something really far away. I don't remember. It might have been earlier this year. But yeah. more confirmation. Get excited. More PC games are coming yeah. via the PlayStation. Hope it runs great on deck because that sounds like a perfect one. I was just about to say, that's a good point on your deck. It would probably be great. Now, an hour and 40 minutes into the show, we're going to be starting the show. Of course, we already covered <laughs> the biggest news, so that's going to be the majority of the show. So let's yeah. get into this second news item over here. Uh, this is via GameSpot, an interview with Phil Horse, um, Hornschwall with Destiny 2 director Joe Blackburn. Gave some details on what to expect tonally when we see the latest installment of the major popular franchise, Destiny, in the expansion named Lightfall. This is a direct quote from him again. Remember, I'm going to cover why I don't cover everything, but I don't cover all the interviews. I want you to go read it. So go to GameStop for get the full context of everything. But here's one of the things when asked about the tone of the of the uh, expansion. Quote, as you started getting towards Lightfall, we said, hey, how can we keep the stakes high but change the mood for a release? Blackburn continued, we look at things like The Empire Strikes Back. That has a feeling of, oh my gosh, the heroes lose, but the mov movie doesn't feel like they lose the whole time. We start to look at, okay, what are things with really high stakes that have a different tone to them? I think we got really attached to sort of blockbuster action movies. Uh, insert quote here. Uh, sorry. Insert another quote here inside of uh, this bigger quote. You can look at things like Aliens. You can look at things like Commando. You can look at things like The Old Guard. And you can say these have specific feel throughout them. But they don't sacrifice that like, hey, the world is at stake. Independence Day is another one that we really look at. It's like, oh my god, watch the trailer for Independence Day. You're like, this is going to be a hell of a movie. The Earth's going to get destroyed. Then you get to the theater, and Will Smith's like, welcome to the Earth. You're like, oh, it's this kind of movie. <laughs> End quote. I love the way he puts it. Go check out the article for the full interview if you're craving more information. Uh, there's uh, there's more of their thought process behind the game, and specifically of the gameplay sense, as well as how they introduced uh, the grappling hook and how that's going to change your Destiny 2 experience. To summarize, the article fits perfectly with the actual headline of the article itself, quote, Bungie wants Destiny 2 Lightfall to feel like Braid Runner meets Independence Day, end quote. End quote. Now, did I put this solely for the fact that I'm trying to talk Emmett Watkins Jr. into playing Destiny 2 with me? I'm going to let you decide that. I'm going to let you at home decide that. Uh, but very quickly, Emmett, any of this uh, excite you? I wanted to throw this in here because... Coming from the prior expansion of Destiny 2 and getting excited for Lightfall, I'm interested in what they go tonally because we know that the final shape is the culmination of everything that Destiny has had. So we're almost kind of expecting this to be kind of a downer expansion. I assume we'll lose, in quotes, like in some way at the end or something. I don't know. Um, it's literally called Lightfall, so I'm imagining something bad will happen to maybe our powers or something similar yeah, to like the Red light War. Light and brown for the season. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> that is probably what will happen. Um, but I just wanted to bring this to people's attention. I'm very excited for Lightfall, and I thought this was an interesting uh, interview with Joe Blackburn on what tonally we can expect from the game. Um, I'm going to keep it real with you, Chief. I haven't cared about Destiny 2 tonally ever. <laughs> like... And I played, I played the single player. I played, what is it? The purple case with the gun. I think Cade dies in it. Forsaken. Yeah. Forsaken. I played Forsaken. And I think I stopped around Forsaken. But the entire time, I didn't, I don't really care about, I think halfway through the main story of Destiny 2, I just started skipping through cutscenes because I was like, I don't care. Yeah, no, but, but it was very fun. Like, I, Destiny 2, one of the best, like, feeling shooters ever um i still feel like that's the case and with every new addition that they make to the gameplay i am interested but a grappling hook like my favorite games in the world have something akin to a grappling hook so okay. titanfall 2 grappling hook spider-man not a grappling hook but basically a grappling hook uh infamous 2 one of the last levels you get an electric grappling hook yep so like i could i'm probably gonna play this just because grappling hook but Will I get into it? I don't know, fam. We're, we got to find out. Uh, but, you know, Bungie campaigns are good, but I, I always hesitate to say I'm going to get into any game because I have seasons. Like, I love Apex Legends. I, I maxed out the Battle Pass one season, and, I, and then I got to 87 on the season after that, and I never touched it again. 
And I, I still like Apex, but I just I have my seasons. Same thing with Fortnite. I think I think I maxed out the last two battle passes, but I feel myself falling off. Of it. Yeah, I, I, wow. I see that, too. I, I was the same with Destiny where I'm kind of peaks and valleys. I didn't even play the last season at all. Um, mm-hmm. pretty much compared to what I do now. And of course, I'm hardcore into it right now as I prepare for the new we'll see. added difficulty of the raid. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you- I get it. I like, uh, I, I'm reminded of when you had me on, um, I think Horizon. you had, I th- yes, yes. When I was on for Horizon, you had asked me if, and the uh, uh, Witch Queen had just came out, and you asked me, is this a good enough campaign for someone to come play? absent of everything around it and at this point in the franchise i can't imagine narratively anyone caring about the game if you haven't already been playing and that's just a speaking to how they've kind of handled the narrative throughout destiny's life cycle also speaking to they really really they really kind of depend on you like really knowing the universe for everything to feel bad i mean the entire idea of savathun was built up very under the surface of destiny for a long time via lore and things and her name was mentioned but if you weren't hardcore into destiny and i told you the next expansion is going to have savathun no one that doesn't play destiny regularly would even know the word and people who play destiny still probably wouldn't know because you have to go read lore you have to very pay attention to the cutscenes where it's a lot of jargon being said so i kind of get what you're saying am i going to quit no I'm going to try and I'm still going to try and get it. It's like drugs. Like I got to get my friends to do it. So I feel better <laughs> when I play it. Yeah. We all got to fucking pass out together. I, I will say the biggest factor, whether or not I will quote unquote, get into this game. I currently work nights at the current job. I am. I am almost into the level where I can start asking to be switched to the day shift. So hopefully if that happens before the end of this year and I go to day shift, maybe I'll have more time while other people have time. Because that's the hardest part of my life right now. It's like, well, I go to work at six. Well, I leave work at six. So <laughs> when are we doing this thing? And it's like, well, never. <laughs> <laughs> never. Goodbye. <laughs> Hang up. <Exactly>. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's the biggest factor for me. I feel you. Game Digital Shop is has an R chord. And before I get into this, I want to clarify. This was at the very, very tail end of us starting. So the, the write up for this is a bit rough. I had to very quickly put this in before starting. So apologies if this is a bit messy. Um, that's why I'm giving full credit to the article. Please go read it for full, full information. But I, I covered the majority of what you need to hear, uh, listen to you. Uh, this is a game industry that is as an article written by Brendan Sinclair discussing an ex work study developer was offered money to try and resolve complaints stemming from when she was at the studio. Scriptwriter Kim McGaskill, back in 20, uh, sorry, 2018, authored a note signed by 10 of the 16 women uh they're detailing unacceptable behavior at the studio including sexual harassment slurs about transgender people and talking about women in a derogatory or sexual ways matt uh yeah mac mac Askell, there we go came forward after the letter went public and stated she actually lost her job because of it she was far from uh going to back down from these claims going as far as asking for her name out of the credits and withdrawing from consideration for the Women in Games Lifetime Achievement Award, saying the reason was Rocksteady being a sponsor of the event. She was offered, quote, lots of money, end quote, but she would decline it and just wanted an apology. Quote, all I want is an apology, and last week I even asked for it. Hell, I half begged. I just wanted this to be resolved, but not like that. Not with money. How does anything change that way? End quote. An official statement from Warner Bros. reads, quote, Investigations found there was no evidence of... Uh, substantiating the allegations of this former employee who resigned in 2019 we stand alongside all for we st- not alongside although it kind of seems that way we stand against all forms of harassment and take any allegation extremely seriously we support those who have concerns they wish to raise we therefore took the necessary time to thoroughly investigate allegations at rock city studios with the utmost integrity end quote the statement said one investigation was conducted by an external independent law firm with a second by a Warner, Warner Media People Relations team from outside the gaming division. Both found that issues raised, quote, were handled appropriately and sensitively. Hmm. So. Not so, not so appropriately. Yeah, right? yeah. So it does seem very strange from, uh, especially Warner Brothers side here, especially offering essentially hush money uh, in form of uh, trying to get her to stop talking about this. Very interesting that she stuck by her guns and just said no to everything. Uh, yeah. Don't know if I could. I don't, don't even know if I could do that. <laughs> if if it was in fact quote lots of money end quote. But um, 
Uh, she said she just wanted an apology. She even went as far as saying she doesn't want to be, and apparently they had offered her all of this. So they were going to give her money. They were going to give her a bunch of extra stuff she didn't go into. And then they were also going to still include her in the credits. And it, she just went no to all of it. So she just, this lady definitely has like an axe to grind against them. They clearly did something that pissed this lady off. Um, so I yeah. wanted to bring this to attention because this is pretty serious and it doesn't seem like there's really been a resolution even since this has been public since I believe tw- uh, around 2019, 2020. Uh, it doesn't seem like I'll, really anything has happened. I'll be honest, because like this is a story you said it popped off 2019. I don't remember it from 2019. Yeah, well, so, I, it happened in yeah. 2019, but it didn't go public, I believe, until 2020. If I'm remembering okay. correctly, uh, again, this was like last minute. I found it and was like, I got to put this in the show really quick. Yeah. So. Why well, I heard this, I think they were talking about this on Kind of Funny Games Daily yesterday. I was listening to it on the way home from work. And um, yeah, it's. Uh, it's crazy we're still at this point where, you know, we've we've heard all the awful things from, you know, your Ubisofts, your Activision, Blizzard, your, yeah, your Blizzard, your what's the other one? Quantic Dreams, like all this <laughs> stuff. But like David Cage hear, hearing it come. Yeah, David. Yeah, David Cage. <laughs> um, but yeah, hearing this stuff come from a Warner Brothers studio is it's not another escalation of it. It just feels like, all right, another one like. We we keep having this and like the fact that they they say that they handled it appropriately and discreetly and all this stuff. Whatever you did clearly wasn't enough if she still feels like an apology wasn't made. I feel like that's the thing that they don't want to do. They they'll never say that they did something wrong, but they will say that they fixed any issues that may have been there. They they want to absolve themselves of all legal, you know, yep, of of all legal issues or wrongdoing or whatever. And it really frustrates me when these folks who just want things right, they just want, like, just apologize. (laughs) That's the craziest thing to me. As long as she's trying the truth, and I think she is, she just wanted an apology, and they didn't do it, which is, like, even if you think it didn't happen, like, is it that bad just to say sorry if it did? I don't know. It just seems like weird. If Again, if all this is true, that's a fucking really weird thing to just not say. It's one of those things where if they were giving a sincere apology, they would have to acknowledge that it happened. That's a good point. Like, That's a good point. If they didn't, they're, they're pro- the reason they're probably not giving apologies is because they they're, either they don't believe it happened or they don't want to legally b- believe or acknowledge. Or acknowledge. Yeah, that's a good point. For so, like, I, I, I think it's just a bunch of corporate BS or just folks being scared of, like, oh, if we agree that something's going on, then we have to answer for a bunch of other shit and then. You know, this is one of 10 who will talk about it publicly out of 16 who apparently have been affected. Yeah. So it's like, you know, if you if you bend their knees to one, you'll bend your knees to all of them, most likely. And so they just don't want to be on the hook for that. I hate this shit. It makes me mad. But like at the end of the day, you know, good for her for having the Keones to like stand up to this shit. Now, I don't even I, think I, I could do this. Yeah. Being, I, I'm just being honest. Probably has, she had, probably has more fortitude than me, if I'm honest. But yeah. At the same time, I am I am nothing but a man. <laughs> so it would be very easy for me to just turn the other cheek because that's the default here. But um, yeah, I fucking... It, it shouldn't be like this. She shouldn't have to withdraw her name from the credit. She shouldn't have to give up a Lifetime Achievement Award. She shouldn't have to do any of this shit just to stand on her morals. The world should have morals enough so that people don't have to lean on their own so much. That's my opinion. But yeah. Glad, glad that you know she's doing something. There's no even like happy ending to this. It's like oh, no, no unfortunately, no. There's not, and apparently, and right. not apparently. Sorry. Uh, and the reason this did was brought up. She actually brought this up uh, uh, on the 18th, so a few days ago. So that's kind of why it's back in the news cycle again. And she fully details. If you want to see her full side of the story, she wrote all about it over on Twitter. She has multiple screenshots of, uh, I believe, a notes app on uh, Android. I think. So if you want to yeah. read the whole thing, I will. Uh, I'll end it with. This last thing that I actually really love. Um, so she ends this whole letter with, To end on the amazing woman, my foul-mouthed grandmother, who gifted me with a moral compass that even Warner couldn't buy, quote, prostitute ye morals for no cunt, end quote. <laughs> <laughs> I respect that. That's fucking cool. That is very cool. As a songwriter once said, that's a boss-ass bitch. <laughs> Now, let's get into something that I am very angry about, and I actually don't know Emmett Watkins Jr.'s thoughts on this. 
Well, we got incredibly bad news, regardless of where you stand on this argument. PSVR 2, the next iteration in the PlayStation VR units, will not be backwards compatible. Coming from the PlayStation blog podcast, Hideki Nishino, Senior Vice President of Platform Experience, said this, quote, PSVR games are not compatible with PSVR 2 because PSVR 2 is designed to deliver a truly next-gen experience. VR, sorry, truly next-generation VR experience. PSVR 2 has much more advanced features like all-new controllers with haptic feedback, adaptive triggers, and inside-out tracking. Eye tracking in the headset, 3D audio, all coming together, of course. So this means developing PSVR 2 requires a whole different approach from the original PSVR, end quote. Unclear if, this is, if there is a huge barrier for games to be easily ported, but it seems Sony is clear that they aren't interested in making it natively backwards compatible. So this, so it will see that developers might have to work on porting their games over manually. And several other things I want to quickly add into this. Uh, there is a rumor, there's an active rumor going around, that the best-selling VR games will make their way to PSVR 2, most in the way of free ports. I'm going to say that in quotes. PSVR, with, um, PSVR without Perot said on Twitter, quote, tons of devs are working on PSVR 2 versions of their PSVR games as we speak, end quote. Take this with a grain of salt, of course. There isn't much going on here, as most people are just pointing out the office. No offense to PSVR without Perot here. Of course they are. I don't think anyone's arguing that it's, that it's not being worked on. The argument is we have to possibly buy these games again. So that's, the, that's my entire argument around this. Why uh, do I have this huge library of psvr games if it's now all useless if i buy a psvr 2 i have multiple things i want to quickly bring up one the only solution in my eyes now since the cat's out of the bag is have a ps collection type service at launch ready i said this on twitter to multiple people this is really the only way in my eyes to save this launch and have a huge uh number of people adapt to this uh, psvr 2 hardware as i'm sure they want to because this thing is going to be a very premium product for an already premium product. So you have to have yeah. two premium products to do this. And then buy games for it. You have to have a PS type collection deal at launch. Have, if you are a member of PS Plus, just like with the PS5, that if you buy it at launch, there'll be 10 to 20 games ready as soon as you plug your thing in. If you have Plus, you'll immediately be able to download Beat Saber... Uh, Saint Sinner 2, Saints and two. It's a Star Wars. I mean, just insert a popular VR game here. That is the only way, at my eyes, you can kind of salvage this because, frankly, this is. I, I I can't understand why this is not embarrassing. I actually brought this up with someone on Twitter, where they were stating that they weren't shocked that PSVR isn't compatible because PSVR two is such leaps and bounds different from PSVR. I am not a I am not in no means saying that these two devices are not different. But are you really telling me that it's impossible for PlayStation to have some sort of backwards API to congent to concurrently work on PSVR games and be able to work it in some way to work on PSVR 2 games? So that that's the most impossible thing. I saw someone say and I respect this guy's opinion a lot, so I'm not going to, like... I'm not shitting on this guy at all, but uh, Dustin Furman, I've had, actually had him on the show before. He was... Uh, I had replied to his tweet, and, he, and I was like, I understand it's probably hard to work on these, but is that really a... an excuse... like, a worthy excuse? We're just going to be like, it has different buttons, so it's hard enough, and and, and it, that was basically his response was like, like, it's not that it's hard, it's just a completely different platform, essentially, and I just... it's just not good enough for me. I don't... I don't know why... It is for other some people. Maybe I'm just missing the forest for the trees and I'm just really blind on this. I am ignorant on the software. I'm not pretending like I'm someone like PSVR without Pro, which I'm sure he knows very, very, very much about the PSVR and the developments and all these things. I'm very ignorant of that. I'm not going to hide that. But this to me is an incredible miss that they should have nailed. And this also pays back your early adopters to your fucking vr system that is the most that is the reason you have the second system in the first place because people bought psvr1 so why would you not let why would you not work on i don't know please Emmett, tell, tell me what you think i'll i'll start here i'll start here I, i'm right there with you when when they say a lot of the biggest selling psvr games are gonna get ports anyway what does biggest selling mean and is that gonna cover some of the ones in my backlog because Thank one you. of the best PSVR games that no one talks about, no one, I'm sure a couple of people have played, but no one says anything about it. 
uh, Static, which is a game by Tarsier Studios, the same folks who made Little Nightmares. Um, it is a it's a VR game, but it's all on one DualShock controller, and you're literally the controller becomes a puzzle box in your hands, and you're just trying to figure out what the buttons do so you can figure out how to solve the puzzle box to go on to the next level. Um, one of my favorite VR games ever, just top to bottom. It's great, uh, but no one talks about it. And it probably didn't sell a million copies or something crazy. So is that getting the port? Is Red Matter the game that I've been wanting to play on PSVR, but I've been waiting for PSVR 2? Is that getting a port? I know that's a smaller title. Um, you know, you'll you'll definitely get stuff like Iron Man VR will get ported. You'll probably get a new, uh, what is it, uh, Astro Bot. You'll probably get that ported, I'm sure. But like to quickly you know, add Arizona in, someone took a picture of the yeah. top 10 selling PSVR games and it was like, you can expect ports of all these for multiple reasons. I don't care. One, I don't know if I have to buy them again. So why the fuck would I care? I don't care if they're ported. I have to buy them again. Wow. Yeah, is that going to be, be worth it? Two, is that what we're measuring? What needs to be ported is how much it's sold. I don't give a fuck how much it's sold. I want to be able to play some of these obscure games that I miss. I've never heard of Static before. That could have been something I would have bought natively on the system when I found out my best friend Emmett Watkins Jr. loved it. Yeah, Static is really fucking good. Like, it, and there's a lot of these smaller games. Like, I always wanted to play. I bought it, but just I've been waiting for PSVR too because I thought it was going to work. Uh, the American Dream, which is another one where it's like a kind of social commentary where it's like random Americana, you know, oh, it's the 1950s typical white American suburban home, but like your hands are guns. And so you have to interact with everything. <laughs> but your hands that's are fucking guns. awesome. And, and that's why it's the American dream. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's um, awesome. But yeah, it's stuff like that. Like those games, the more obscure, the more artistic, the more interesting uses of the VR platform are probably going to get tossed by the wayside, let alone the like admittedly fun but not very artistically valuable things like gun club and pavlov vr like just go open up a bunch of different weapons and just shoot in the gun range and that stuff has its fun too but like a lot of that stuff's gonna get left by the wayside so that's gonna suck now i will say as far as like how easy is it to port i understand that to a certain degree a lot of this stuff is just data like you know you can transfer the input method from the PlayStation Move controllers, you can transfer a lot of that data into PSVR 2 and just change how it's read, change how it's outputted and all that stuff. You can make a lot of that stuff work. But what I've been hearing is that the original PlayStation VR 2, the actual STK for development was very difficult to work with. That's the big reason why you didn't see. Too I did read a bit. Ports. I did read a bit about this. I believe it was via Jeff Grubb. He was saying like, yes, a lot of different developers had to kind of duct tape and bubble gum their way to make VR games even work on the thing. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's true. But now we're kind of talking out of both sides of our mouth, maybe unintentionally here, because people are now saying, "Oh my God, people will just port to PSVR two because it'll be so easy." then why the fuck is it not backwards compatible if it's so easy to port the games? So now what are yeah. we saying? I am very confused. I think, I think it's this. I think you're going to see a lot of ports from Oculus and from PC VR to PSVR 2 because now the input methods are almost exactly the same. The tracking is almost exactly the same. Everything is going to be one for one, and they've updated their SDK to kind of be in line with the standard of VR development yeah. now. I think PSVR 1 is the odd man out. I think it's a case of, I think it's the same case as why PS3 still isn't playable, backwards compatible on PS5, where, yes, all these other games, similar SDKs, everything works, and then they did something completely different for PS3, fucked it all up, and yep. now you can only stream it. For an entire generation. Exactly. I feel like that's the case with PSVR 1 here. You know what I want? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I want, just like they have with P to be able to stream PS3s, I want far, because I, it, it just, just in case you don't know, Achievers. There's literally warehouses of PS3s hooked up to like generators so you can stream your PS3 game because they still haven't really figured out how to do it. So it's literally just playing on a server miles away from you. There's a PS3 playing a game and shooting you what it's playing like through Wi-Fi. So that's They're like still working on it though. So maybe PS6 will get may, it. Maybe they'll get it. They, they'll figure out this mystery of, of sale processing. I want 
<laughs> I want some sort of farm with people with PSVR on. And when I want oh, a PSVR man. 2 game, I want it to signal from there that they have to mirror me exactly. So I'm playing PSVR 2 stream natively. All right. Figure it out. All right. I figured that out in 10 minutes, Snowy. Jokes, Here, is, jokes aside. Demo. Jokes is I can give you a live demo ahead. on how that would be. Please. Look at your hand <laughs> and think I want to move my hand and then 0.46 milliseconds after you have that thought, you then move your hand. And do that for 10 minutes <laughs> with every action. I want it, Sony. Start working on it. J jokes aside, this, this uh, I will say, did leave me uh, a bit sullied on wanting to buy one now. I went from a yeah. day one buy to now I'm like, I'm going to wait for maybe a year. There's going to be a good bit of games stacked up and then maybe I'll buy it. Yeah, I'm waiting to see what the ports are. And honestly, now that I know all these aren't getting ported, I might go back and just put on my same here. Stuff. Same here. I was actually yeah. thinking the same thing. I'm going to see if there's going to be a, a collection that is like good enough. And if there isn't and they're just launching the system, I'm going to be like, all right, I'm just going to play my VR one until I get through all these games and then I can. And then I'll, I don't know, sell it or something. Yeah, exactly. I'm right there with you. We'll see how it shakes out next year. We'll come soon. We'll see. We'll see. Um, very quickly, we're going to go over to Shuya Yushida because he said some interesting things. Um, that indies are going to be taking the risks that, uh, uh, that maybe their bigger games won't. Um, here's a quote via Video Games Chronicle on, uh, by Jordan Midler. He was actually mentioned earlier in the show by Emmett. Well, there are big games like Horizon Call of the Mountain, Resident Evil Village, and yes, they're amazing, but it's the indies in my mind that really take the risk uh, because they want to make games on VR. Indies have been waiting for the next VR boom. Uh, oh, uh, just like Mish Mizuguchi san Mizuguchi san Oh, Mizuguchi san Yeah, Mizuguchi san yeah, yeah. referring to Te Tetsuya Michiguchi, the developer behind Res and Tetris Effect, which are fucking great games. Um. And that was really it. I don't again. I don't cover full interviews, so go check out Video Games Chronicle to read the full thing. I just thought that was interesting. That Shuya Yoshida is he, first off, he's still hanging around. It does seem like he's just chilling, like walking around, like yeah, I like he's indies. I'll talk out. about indies. That's the most for PlayStation. Now. Yeah, yeah, that's all. He, that's all he's doing over there. But I just, I, I just wanted to highlight that. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping VR two signifies, like he said, a VR boom, like a a, a very large. There's going to be a huge adoption. I don't want every game to be VR. I just want like options and more things to be added so a little right, bit of a not, nice not everything be a shooter let's yeah get yeah, some other yeah things. let's get some experiences i don't I, you know i've i played mm. uh uh the robber game on psvr one oh, the robber game oh, fuck uh is it a crisis brigade no oh, that's the cop game robber game fever blood and truth i played blood and truth oh <laughs> that's the worst way you could have described that it is the getaway it is it is <laughs> yeah but i played wow. that and all it's right. like it's like all right i played this and like it feels like every other thing is just pick a gun up and shoot it like let's get let's yeah. get creative moss good example of that moss is great i agree more astrobots as well i'll <laughs> uh, just keep making astrobot forever yeah, Jeez, so good it is a quick one microsoft stealth dropped a lot of dmr checks off of xbox one titles um, and multiple instances, you will not need a disc. Go ahead. There's nothing too crazy here, but what they basically did was kind of pull back on a lot of the DRM checks that the original Xbox One titles did. Essentially, they would do multiple checks so you could not play them offline. And they kind of scaled that back a bit, although it's not perfect now. You'll be able uh, to the majority of your Xbox One discs, just plug it in and play. You should be fine doing that offline. Uh, I believe they don't even require the initial DRMR check, although that's unclear because some games need online to trigger their installation in period. So it's it's hard to tell. I would I would say you're probably 60, 40, like the majority of them, you'll probably still need to be online there. There's no way you would have to test every title to like know how extensive this is. But it's good news as DRMR is annoying. So if you are out of Internet, you might be able to play some of those Xbox One titles digitally and on disc. So just check it out next time. Play Bayonetta. <laughs> Play Bayonetta. I have it digitally. Uh, this news comes from PC Gamer as Jeff Goodman, the lead hero designer on Overwatch, has left Blizzard. It doesn't seem as sudden as Blizzard said he had plans early in the year to leave. 
If you're a fan of Roblox, then you have Jeff Goodman to thank for a lot of the heroes you have come to love as he has been with the game since pre-production on the title, working on heroes in the game. And this is not it. Another high-profile uh, high employee leaves Blizzard as Hearthstone game director has left Blizzard after 11 years at the company. We're seeing a lot and a lot and a lot of departures from this company. So uh, expect it to be pretty different in the next 10 years, most likely, because pretty much most of the veterans are about gone now. I think they still have a lot of uh, vets on the WoW side of things. They still have a good bit of people still from original pre-pro uh, Overwatch. And Hearthstone, I can't remember. I'm pretty sure he was the highest profile, but there might be a couple other vets still there too. But I do think we're going to start seeing a some sort of mass exodus continue on Blizzard. Yeah. It, either that or you're going to get a bunch of Overwatch clones from new studios in like four years. <laughs> yep. Yep. Now, now, now if we see Jeff Goodman go somewhere or if we see um what if Jeff Goodman with the high res to work on paladins <laughs> yeah the game oh god and the game director for um our stone leave will now know like all right that's a card game and then that's uh an overwatch yeah, clone shooter yeah yeah we'll see day updates for you so the logic g cloud came out now it's coming out oh, sorry details of it came out it's not out october 17th is when this thing is actually going to drop now if you pre-order it early it's going to be 50 dollars less so if you pre order now it's 300 bucks when it comes out it'll be 350 and here's a couple details it has a 1080 screen 12 plus hour battery life has geoforce now support it also has local game streaming on xbox and steam link it also has xbox cloud gaming enabled and it runs on Android. And all that is $349.99 or $299 if you pre-order this thing. I can't imagine wanting this thing. Maybe I'm wrong. I would just buy a Steam Deck. Maybe I'm in the minority, I, I, but I don't understand why you would buy this. I'll say to play devil's advocate here for this thing, because I'm right there with you. All the stuff I said on Steam Deck, I can already stream Xbox. I can already stream Stadia. I could probably get something like GeForce Now working if I really wanted to, but I don't. I don't use that. I can do all that stuff on Steam Deck, and I can play things natively too. So what's the, what's the deal? Um, I will say, from the presentation I saw, they are saying that this is more or less just an Android tablet. If that's the case, and this is running Android, okay. you get access to the Android Store and all that stuff. You could do some similar deep Steam Decky things. You can. Get on the Play Store. You can play some Grim Valor. You can play some Dead Cells. You can play some actual native games. You could also get on there and find some emulators. You can get install some Game Boy emulators, PS1. You know, you can do some classic games on Android as well. So that's another bonus. So with all that stuff and a 1080p screen, which is technically more higher resolution than this, and the longer battery life, because even with Steam Deck, even if you're streaming and not playing something natively on it, you're getting maybe five hours. Yeah. Where 12 hours is pretty fucking crazy and just a really good look so there are benefits to this if this is like it, it it plays to me as like a steam deck light which is for me a steam Deck light sounds really appealing if you are someone who is maybe the switch was your first console or something ah. really like that okay and you're like all right i want to play i want to play halo i want to play the cool big boy games but i'm still very intimidated i want to play in the same four factor but I'm also really intimidated by the idea of the extensive customability and the tweaking you can do on a Steam Deck. So this seems like a perfect middle ground, especially if you're around the internet all the time. If you're not in like the backseat of a car on a road trip, this is perfect. So yeah, I would, I'm interested to see what happens with this one. I, I was interested in it, but I was interested in it if it was like a $200 product, not a $300 product. So I, Yeah, the, the, that is my point here where like, First off, that is true. The 12 hour battery is, is pretty um, impressive. Although, are you going to be doing anything strenuous on this device? If you're just streaming, then most likely nothing strenuous will be happening in the device. So, that battery life is pretty good. Um, but again, $300, I think at that point, like buy a Switch or a Steam Deck. Like, just yeah. like at that point, like, why would you not buy the other two really, really popular things? I feel like they're just a bit too late. And also, just as a, um, a thing to point out, uh, not to call anyone out, but a lot of people were very excited when Kun, uh, Hideo Kojima was oh, Kojima. at yeah. Xbox. 
he was playing this. People were saying, like, is this Xbox's new hand? I was like, no, it's this. So if you did think that and saw the picture that uh, uh, when Hideo Kojima had, like, a little thing in his hand, he was playing this. So relax, everybody out there. Right. He was not playing an X-Boy, whatever the fuck you want to call it. <laughs> X-Boy. X-Boy. Something that I will try not to burst in tears because I can finally say <laughs> there is a Suikoden 1 and 2 remaster coming next year. It cut out all that screaming. <laughs> I have great filters on this, so that's actually probably yeah. for the best. That was good. Incredible. <laughs> it's happening. Did they see back in 2020 when the original Suikoden creator made a Kickstarter and it made millions of dollars? Possibly. And they just were like, wait, we can make money too. And then just started remastering these things. Probably, yes. Do do I care? No. We're getting a Suikoden 1 and 2 remaster, which gives which now makes Suikoden and 5 remaster a possibility. It's on the table now. I'm going to cry. I'm going to be buying these games immediately. Couple things to look out. Of course, it's coming next year. There's a couple things that you could feature. All background illustrations have been upgraded to HD. Updated effects, breathe new light into the pixel art. This is all from the official thing. New environment sound effects to immerse yourself in the fantasy world. Battle sound, uh, sound effects are also now in HD and add a new level of realism. Newly added autosave, which will help all you fucking casuals out there. Battle fast forward, conversation logs. Emmett, when I saw this <laughs> announced from Tokyo Game Show, I screamed. I was so excited. I cannot wait for Suikoden 1 and 2 Remastered. I will say, where the fuck has all these Suikoden fans been? I feel like I was the only one, and now all of a sudden, oh, we love Suikoden. Shout out to Jared Petty. He's always been a Suikoden fan. Thank you so much. Gene Park, I didn't know, also loves Suikoden. He's very welcomed in the Suikoden circle that I have, which now consists of three people. So I'm very excited. Uh, the other two people don't know they're in this circle, right. but I do. I cannot wait for this to come. I will buy this minute one I can. The, whatever the highest edition, I'll be buying it. They won't make a collector's edition. They won't. They won't. But whatever costs the most money, I'll be paying for it. It could literally be, we'll give you a feather and the game for $100. I'm buying it. I'm buying it. It's done. It's already done. Jokes aside, I can't wait for this game. This these games have special, special parts in my heart, and I can't fucking. And when I when I saw the trailer and how pretty it looks, I lost my shit. I will say I'm very happy for you and your ilk for this remaster finally coming out. I know the feeling of wanting a long forgotten franchise to come back, and sometimes I know the feeling of getting it. So, <laughs> yeah, I I understand that y'all are happy for this one. I'm excited to see have it be in the mainstream conversation why these games are something to care about cuz i'm not saying they're bad i'm not saying you shouldn't care about them they weren't a part of my childhood they weren't yeah. a part of a lot of people's childhood no, not really it was pretty so, it was pretty obscure thing i think it originally launched as Gen genko suikoden in japan it eventually was ported here under just suikoden and it was just it was one of those jrpgs that was just kind of in the background not many people seemed to it doesn't it didn't seem to ever get incredibly popular until suikoden 2 came out and then Suikoden 3 and 4 quickly killed the popularity because they were just terrible games. And then Suikoden 5 is a good game that people sleep on because just it just wasn't relevant anymore and no one plays them. But I, I will die on the hill that Suikoden 5 is a good game. God damn it. I will. I will. Huh. No one plays well, them, excited. but they're awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing that conversation be had in a more mainstream consciousness so that we can... Find another franchise for us to latch our feelings on to. Like, I, I just want to know will, why people love this game so much. I will say, I think if you play the second one, you'll be fine. Although, it's much better if you play one, fully complete it, and then port your save to two. Because you get a bunch of stuff. You get, like, an additional star. Because the, the whole idea of the game is you're, like, a resistance group and you need to recruit people. There's a, there's a total of 108 total stars of Destiny in each game. And you have, like, a different 108 people you go and get. It's very fun. It's very good. Interesting. Fun. <laughs> Game Pass. Of course, every time they release this, I have to read out what's coming to Game Pass very soon. So get excited. Available today. Deathloop, Cloud, PC, and Xbox Series X. We see Deathloop coming to Xbox after the long year that it was 
only on PlayStation. Get excited. Very good game. If you have not played it, what is wrong with you? I gotta go beat it. It's great. I think you would like it, although my favorite part is the narrative, and when you beat it, it kind of dips a little bit, but it's good. Yeah. Hard Space Shipbreaker. Cloud and Xbox Series S and X. I don't know what that is. Enjoy that. This is all coming oh. soon. Spider Heck Cloud Console and PC, September 22nd. I gotta read this. This is gonna be available day one in Game Pass. Spider Heck is a... F- Whoa. <laughs> She's taking over. Run at it. Is a fast paced couch co op brawler dueled to the death against your friends and catch delight as they pull off the ultimate parkour feat before, before catapulting themselves face first into lava. Or join your, your forces and show those pesky insects who are the real heck monsters here. What? Okay. Yeah. That wasn't a very good description of, of the game. Four player, it's one of those four player co op, or not co op, but like couch. Multiplayer you go, chaos you, physics. You fight some is, insects. Yeah. Exactly. Beacon Pines, Cloud Console and PC, September 22nd, available day one on Game Pass. Slime Rancher 2, which is going to be a very anticipated game. Uh, this is going to game preview cl- Cloud, PC, and Xbox Series S and X, September 22nd, available day one on Game Pass. Moon Scars, Cloud Console and PC, September 27th. Also available day one on Game Pass. A lot of day one games this month. I want to play Moon Scars. Moon Scars looks really cool. Unravel the mystery of your existence in this challenging yet rewarding Souls-like 2D platform slasher. As the fierce claw-born warrior Grey Imra, (laughs) you must push your combat skills to the limit and master new abilities to progress through this stunning yet unforgiving world. Facing off against relentless enemies and the cruel mistress the moon you will discover your past and finally find the peace you so desperately desire now that is how you write a description well learn everyone read these you learn that's a incredibly worded by whoever wrote that it's very exciting i will now try this this sounds fucking awesome yeah i'm looking forward to it challenging yet we're rolling souls like 2d it's crazy that in the last like 15 years ish we just have a whole new genre of games now in the form of souls like I love it. I love you it too. It's very cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it also cool. when you say souls like it's an identifiable thing you can attach to something. Something that roguelikes have kind of missed because it's just become so nebulous now. But I like that we have ro- hey, roguelike. All right, now I know exactly what you mean. Oh, it's souls like. Boom. I can now picture the game in my head. Things like that. Yeah, it's going to be good. Grounded is finally getting a full release. Cloud console and PC September 27th. Go have fun in your uh, shrunken world of Grounded. Say hey to Rick Moranis for me. Please. <laughs> Let's build a zoo. Cloud console and PC. This is on September 29th. Guess what? You're building a zoo. Valheim game preview only on PC September 29th. It is getting a console port, but just not right now. Uh, go enjoy that. This is an incredibly um, popular game. So try it out. It's a survival game. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Paw Patrol <laughs> Grand Prix Cloud Console and PC September 30th available day one on Game Pass. No track is too big, no racer too small. The Paw Patrol are on their fastest missions yet to win the Pup Cup. Race around iconic locations including Adventure Bay, Jake's Snowboarding Resort, and the Jungle in this four-player championship to find out who will be crowned the winner. My favorite uh, memes are Defund the Police and it's the Paw Patrol Cop Dog. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was just about to mention that meme. I was it's, about like I, I don't know. I heard like some random TikTok rap and they were like fuck twelve including Paul. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, I saw I saw that. Great. I love it. Dude. Uh, so good, man. Literally the moment I hear Paw Patrol, I just picture that meme in my head and I can't help but laugh. Someone did a cob with the Paw Patrol dog too. Like <laughs> dude. It's so good. Uh, oh, um, amazing cultivation simulator PC. It's available now. A uh, bunch of DLCs. We never go over the DLCs. Remember, if you want us to, just tell us uh, via the comments. Nah. No, they don't. They don't. They don't. No one has <laughs> literally ever said, wow, I wish you covered DLC and game updates. <laughs> Xbox Touch controls coming to nine more games. <laughs> Dangarapa version three, Grounded, Nino Kuni, Route 96, Shadow Run Returns, Dragonfall, and Hong Kong, The War of Mine, Torment Tides of Numera. This is all games leaving September 30th. Of course, 
if it's leaving September 30th, that means you have to prior to September 30th either finish playing them or grab the 20% off game. Uh, sorry, 20% off the price and buy the game while it's still in Game Pass. These are all games leaving. AI, the Somnolio files, Cloud Console and PC. Astri Ascending, Cloud Console and PC. Dandy A's, Cloud Console and PC. Dirt 4, PC, EA Play. Dirt Rally, PC, EA Play. Going Under, Cloud Console and PC. Lemonous Gate, Cloud Console and PC. Slime Rancher, Cloud Console and PC. Subnautica Below Zero, Cloud Console and PC. The Procession, Procession to Calvary. Yeah, to Cloud Console and PC. Unsighted, Cloud Console and PC. And Vistage, Cloud Console and PC. Uh, in a rare move, something that said it was leaving last month is actually staying. That's Aragami 2. So we covered last month it was leaving. It is not. It is staying on Game Pass for more time. We don't know how long, of course. Very cool. I will say very quickly, AI to Somnium Files, my friend uh, Drew Debassant really likes that game. And a lot of people like that game. So definitely get on that. I like going under a lot. Definitely try out that game. It is a very fun roguelike. And finally, uh, Unsighted. Heard a lot of positive things about Unsighted, especially if you like anxiety-inducing narratives. So definitely try that one out as well. There's a few things I'm definitely going to be trying out. One, AI Simnomy Files I've had downloaded forever. I just have not played it. I think I'm going to try and delve into it and try to get that 20% off before it leaves. Another thing, um, I want to play Immortality on Game Pass. I've been saying that for like two weeks now, and I just haven't gotten Same. around to it. But I want to play it because Same. people said it's weird, and I... We don't get enough weird shit, so I want to play it just to give it that little support. Not only are people saying it's weird, they're saying it's like like when people are like, oh, I'm going to stream Immortality, people are like, ooh, pulling their collar, because apparently it's a lot of violence and a lot of sex. Oh, and really? The fact that that is in this game, but it isn't taught to, like, that isn't part of the conversation. Like, the, the discourse is not, oh, they do it and it's poorly done. The discourse is they do that and it's a great game. So I got to see what the fuck they're doing to make that work in a video game. I believe so it was Blessing uh, Audio Jr. over on Kind of Funny. I believe he was the first one I saw talk about this on Twitter. He just said, he basically surmised a couple things, but the main thing I remember is it's a weird game. And he said a couple other things, but that's what stuck with me. And I was like, and it was a very strange weird. screenshot gift thing. That was, I was like, I have to touch this. Like, and I believe he was saying, don't read about it or so, i think to that nature yeah. he's like he's like yeah. do not look into it don't read about it it's very similar to the everywhere everything all at once movie like you don't want to spoil oh, what yeah. it is because like that's part of the fun so i'll be all trying right, yeah. to do I'm, that i will be playing this on steam deck through cloud gaming haha <laughs> oh shit run and the drone racing league simulator will be free to claim from the pc marketplace on epic game store from september 29th until october 6th Portal RTX was announced. This is going to be an RTX enhanced version of the 2007 Puzzle Clock developed by Valve. It's coming out in October sometime. It looks fucking cool. So if you have a very fancy graphics card, enjoy that. Be neat. Emmett Watkins Jr. I end this show with a singular question, and of course it is the end of the show for the week. So I have to ask you a question that of course is what do you have to do for the week? Of course, that could be a game, a TV show, a movie, a comic book, a graphic novel of some kind. You got a manga on the back. You got a podcast. Really anything. What <laughs> do you have queued up for the week? Uh, I have a few things queued up. Uh, number one, I got to catch up on my, uh, I was about to say Wonder Woman. Good God. Got to catch up on She-Hulk. I am. Um, I didn't watch last week's episode and this week's episode just came out. So I got to watch both of those. I'll probably do that right after this. Um, so that's what I got as far as TV goes. I know Atlanta just started back with its new season. I got to catch up on that because I will watch that finale live with everybody. I have to be there for that moment. So I got to catch up with the rest of last season and the two episodes this season. Uh, Abbott Elementary, I want to catch up before that new season starts. And as far as video games go, it's going to be Steam Deck all day. I just reinstalled Control. I just reinstalled or I just installed Moon Scars. Uh, not Moon Scars. What's the one we talk? Moon Lighter. Oh, yeah, Moonlighter. Yes, yeah. The one you yeah, yeah, said Moonlighter. at the beginning to show. Yes, Moonlighter. Exactly. I'm very excited That's for you to try out. Yeah, so I'm going to be trying those out. I want to play more Saints Row because Saints Row, I got Saints Row and then immediately got distracted with like other games. And then I got the Steam Deck right after that. So it's been like almost a month since I've really wow. played Saints Row consistently. I, it's been like two or three weeks, but still, it feels like a long time. So I've only been getting back into that recently. I want to continue that. And, hopefully beat that before 
I got to beat it before Bayonetta at the very least. So, yeah. You know, that's a little bit more than a month there. Um, so I'm going to be playing more Steam Deck stuff. Uh, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Nothing musically coming out, nothing movie coming out. So yeah, fun stuff. I'm going to be doing all that. That's all I got. <laughs> I, can't do I wanted, I was, I wasn't going to say anything. Just see how long you just sit there and be like, I right, fucking do your show. So, <laughs> so I have quite a bit to cover. I, I want to play Immortality. I want to play AI Simnomia Files. I want to finish up Midnight Fight Express. I, of course, need to go back to Bayonetta. I, of course, need to watch the, uh, from the list of Emmett Watkins Jr. made fun of me. So I have to go watch these movies list. Hell yeah. Um, so many on that list. I don't even know where to begin. Maybe we, I watched her. Of course, I covered. Hey! So, of course. What did you think about it? I did, yeah, I didn't know you. Uh, I forgot to tell you. I did uh, an episode uh, with uh, Iso Christian over on Popcorn Pod about her, and that it was oh, a fantastic no. movie. Um, I loved the aesthetic. I loved the serious act. The acting is what really got me. And, uh, and the acting from Scarlett Johansson specifically was insane. Uh, I loved the use of darkness. That was kind of one thing I really pulled away from this, that they use darkness very, very well, where I don't really think of another movie that really did that well, or at least even attempted to do it. Like, just sitting in the darkness and then painting pictures is just... I don't know. There was something about it that like, kind of pushed it over the limit of, like, this is a good movie to, like, wow, this is really great at kind of everything they're doing. Yeah, good cinematography. <laughs> um at the end of the day i can't really tell you what movie is going to be up of course thursday is our movie day so i gotta pick something from this list and i don't i don't know um i'm, I'm thinking maybe princess bride shawshank redemption are throwing out me tropic thunder seven Two di- three completely yes. different yes vibes. yes but i like that you know i you, you don't know what mood you're in until you're sitting down with dinner so like what yeah. mood are we going to be in it's, it kind of depends uh, those are just movies that stand out to me right now. Something in Mad Max, 1917. These are movies that I'm like, eh, these are all good ones that I really want to get to. So, um, those are just a couple off the top of my head. But excellent. I of course am slowly, slowly getting through that very large list. Um, aside from that, that's pretty much it. Of course, Destiny 2. Always expect me to play that until I eventually get Emmett Watkins Jr. into it. Um, <laughs> one day. Uh, that's it. That's the show. We had a huge show. This is. The longest show ever is Emmett always yeah, on the longest shows Emmett? ever? Yes, yes he is. You're yeah. at, you're kind of getting the theme here, but of course, it's all quality, so I don't care. Uh, we're clocking in at two and a half hours, so it flew by. Thank you so much again for joining me, my friend. I I always look forward to our episodes, and this was uh, uh, nothing less than a great episode as always with you. Uh, until yeah, until we see you again, Emmett. Uh, th- again, thank you so much. Remember to go check out Video Games uh, Utopia. You s- recently launched Spoonful, which I fucking meant to bring up at oh. the beginning of the show, and I. <laughs> Damn it! I, I forget now. <laughs> it's all good. I can bring it up. Spoonful, now. please um, tell us about Spoonful. Yeah, Spoonful is a new podcast that me and also kind of funny community member person that you might know, uh, Mario Pacquadio. Also that known as Mario we're going to have next week. Maybe he planned Ooh. this, maybe not. <laughs> well, yeah, I totally planned that. Let's say that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I absolutely love the, uh, well, me and Mario, he had me on way back in the day for uh one big topic and i was a frequent guest on there and the conversation was so good on those episodes that we said hey why don't we just tie the knot and so we've been talking about it for a few months you guys Uh, got married holy shit (laughs) yeah his girlfriend's not gonna like that um but yeah we we decided to go ahead and make it a whole thing so we've been talking about it for a few months we had a couple test episodes and finally we have the full thing out uh recently we had blessing jr on to talk with us about uh, the new JID album, The Forever Story. Uh, And I really love that album. And so does he. And Mario actually listened to it as well. So uh, we all talked about it. And we talked a little bit about the Soulsborne series of games and why they're good. And Mario's recent journey with those games. And I know Blessing likes that stuff too. And I just sit back and talk about The Surge 2 whenever I can. (laughs) So, um, yeah, that though, it's a really good episode. And, you know, if you like me on this show, check me out on there. I get to talk about more than just games. So I will be listening be- to that episode after this. So I'm excited. I'll be well, listening to that probably when I play a game or something. Um, very, uh, very cool that you got Blessing too. 
and specifically, I love that Mario is going through the From Software catalog. So that's a perfect melding of those two. That I can't wait to listen to. Um, also, quickly, scheduling error. It's in two weeks, not next week. I actually don't have anyone for next week, so I got to fix that. What's funny is I fucked up. You do the thing where it's like, oh, let me schedule out three weeks ahead. And I did, but I fucked up and forgot about next week. So I will quickly <laughs> let you guys know when I have that fixed. Um, so anyways... Actually, you know what? I know why that fucked up. Anyways, that's not important. Um, yes, Spoonful. I will be listening to that right after this. Thank you so much um, for starting an episode. Why did I say that? Uh, but I will also say that uh, Welcome to the Thing is another podcast I'm also on. We're going to be recording that later tonight. And we have a guest from Fanbyte on that one as well. I, so, need, to, uh, I, was, I need to reach out to those people because I very much want to have them spotlighted on the, on the show. Because, of course, that's terrible to hear that you lose your job regardless of. Yeah, where it's exactly. from so yeah look out for that i don't want to say who the guest is because we haven't recorded it yet so i want to give him some time but um yeah i'm, I'm excited for that one and of course tl foster and uh and jared green they're all great people so yeah excellent <laughs> thank you again we are going to leave now and go live our lives but until the next time you hear our lovely voices goji <laughs>